Hey Arizona, just because weed is legal now doesn't mean your criminal record is clear. You need to visit azexpunge.org today. The Reclaim Your Future campaign can expunge your record for free. Go to azexpunge.org now.
Hey Arizona, just because weed is legal now. Hey Arizona, just because weed is legal now doesn't mean your criminal record is clear. You need to visit azexpunge.org today. The Reclaim Your Future campaign can expunge your record for free. Go to azexpunge.org now.
Disclaimer, this video, like all videos featured on this channel, is definitely intended for mature audiences. This video is likely to contain profane language, content is inappropriate for minors. This video is not for kids. Welcome to the Dr. Green Jump Show. Not an Yes. <clears throat> we are seeking those that are helpful because we need a lot of help. It's the Dr. Green Thumb Show live on Twitch, Discord, YouTube, and the home site, www.bereal.tv. Welcome. I'm Dr. Green Thumb. And guess what? I got my big bro in the house, DJ Muggs, the yeah. Black Goat. What's happening? What's happening? Yes, yes. What's up, world? We're here, baby. Live and direct from Los Angeles, California. That's right. And we also have Eric Big Drum Bobo. Yeah, buddy. What the deal? We got the Treehouse Crew, Bolt of Blombo, Bra Bra, and the Dominator. Yo, how you doing, B? The Treehouse is doing good today. Shout to DJ Muggs as well. What up, what up? Word up. Also, everybody, if you put hashtag Be Real TV in your super chat, we're gonna you might be entered to, uh, to win a free pair of three-day passes to Cali Vibes. Boom. Oh, so wow. do that as well. All right. Hashtag your ass up. And we also have the concentrate kid, Cali Blaith. What up, everybody? <laughs> That's right. Shots. And, uh, you know, we got Mr. Milligram's E-Zone in the building. I've been going down the Milligram ports again. Been down down the road. I, you know, I was looking at some of my, my, my you know, RSO and SHO gel caps, and they were calling to me, but I was, like, ignoring them because I already know. What it's, happens? It's the defeat part that just is too much yeah, to the bear defeat. with. Yeah. Like when you, you the war's over and you know you lost, that's mm -hmm. it. Like that's the part that's hard to just take it take in. But, but you don't need to go that hard. That's the thing. There's, that's the only way it's gonna end, bro. You're gonna get tired in the moment you're gonna knock out. You know yeah. what I mean? Like Are you still going for more milligrams? Are you still trying to No, ever extreme? since the two thousand milligram day, I, I'm good. I, I I haven't really because it took me two days to recover from that. Yeah. Takes take some time. Hey, uh, I want to send a shout out to Eric Sermon for coming in and uh, sit with us. That was amazing. Yeah, that was the shit. Um, and Mugs. What up? What up? So you know, I you you watched it yesterday. Yeah. You told me, and, but I wanted to like go a little bit more in depth on the story that I told him because you and I and Send Dog and I think Mello was there, and Julio G and Tony G were DJing, and it was a K day. A promoted party, right? Yeah, K Day at the Casa Camino. EPMD was there, you know, and um, that night went crazy. Fool started shooting, in going nuts, lot, helicopters yeah. in the parking lot, and everybody started running out the door. And I remember them escorting EPMD out too, right into their car. Yeah. Them coming out the front door, because we never left. We went out right to the front to the side. Yeah, full a blown brawl broke out, right? Like, I, you know, I didn't tell the full part of the story because it w was mostly about Eric at that point, you know what I mean? And I wanted to give him props and tell him a crazy story. But what the, the thing that popped it off, because a lot of people were like, well, how did EPMD's music pop it off? And it wasn't that EPMD's music popped it off, is that, you know, again, I was gang banging for a time and uh, I got locked up in... Uh, Juvenile Hall, Los Padrinos, right? And I got hit up by some Crips on my first day. <laughs> and I stood up and gave them my set because this is how it runs. You know what I mean? You go in and, you know, they come, what set you from? And they'll either throw the, the blood or cuz behind it, right? And they cuzzed me on this one. So I got up and I, you know, claimed my set on them, as you know, right? And two other bloods that were from other neighborhoods got up with me. It was like, it ain't happening here, homie. Because they were going to try to two-on-one two me, but 
two other bloods jumped up and uh you know ran with me and then we were tight from there but so fast forward to this gig that was probably i don't know i'm gonna say six seven months after that whole thing happened um we we're at the casa and i think epmd had done two songs and first at the corner of my eye I see this dude that i recognize from that that time and he's with 20 30 of his homies and they see me and i think i tell you or saying i said hey man this homie just made me over here yeah i remember um I remember this. i'm gonna have to get out of here act Dang. like you don't know me don't come with me who were they and trying to shoot that day they weren't really trying to shoot anybody they were trying to come you know stomp me out <laughs> but like you know there's other gangsters there and they're not just gonna get beat up without you know repercussions so in the parking lot when it got when it unfolded out into the parking lot that's when shots started ringing out i don't know if anybody got hit because you know i i wasn't trying to get stomped out by 20 dudes mm -hmm. you know we only had four of us five four or five of us there against you know 20. yeah she used to go down at the casa all the time man i remember they broke all the windows out of every car down the street then we went back the next week I had fixed my window, then they broke all the windows again. Every car, <laughs> like 50 cars, every car down the block by the something. freeway. Yeah, there's that street right Every right damn right car. There. Because Everybody paid the price. Hey, That's, yeah, yeah, hey, look, when I bolted out of the club, I, I got out just on time because they were trying to get through people to get to me, right? And uh, so as I'm out the door, I try to find any street that I can go down trying to guess that they wouldn't come down, especially because, you know, it's it was, uh, you know, you know some salvies that that ran that neighborhood or something right. like that at that point and uh as i roll up this one block and i'm like you know just kind of <laughs> checking attempts see if they're like coming down the block i'm noticing every car window busted out every car window didn't matter old new middle of the road all them cars window bashed something was taken out of it you know but uh luckily Sounds like oakland Luckily, I didn't get I didn't get caught. Neither did the homies. We just, you know, missed out on the rest of EPMD set. But here, cheers for having my my big bro in the yeah, house. Thanks here. for having me once again. Yeah, I appreciate thanks. it. And congratulations on Death Valley, man. Thank you, brother. Yeah, man. Appreciate that. I don't know. What you, I just seen you jumping up and down. I was, what was you saying? Oh, the oh, mic okay. closer. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Man, that is some. Um, it's that, good, right? Yeah, that is some out the cabinet type of Smooth. thing. Right yes, there. I mean, you know, when my big bro comes, we got to have this like nice. that's some shit. That ish, it's really nice. Um, Ooh, baby, you've been doing a lot of um, took this from Everest, Everlast. Yeah, it's <laughs> like because he told it's me he has Ever a crazy collection. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's his that. one, right? Yeah. Well, Everlast, he likes that Jameson. Mm. Um, but you've been doing a lot of screenings to the movies, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I took, I did this film, um, pretty much about I don't know nine, ten months ago, and took like six months to make. We was, um, I did like a hundred music videos in the last seven years, and I was like, I don't want to make another music video. I'm bored. Yeah. What can I do, man, that I haven't done that's gonna excite me? And I was like, let's do a short film. Um, first it was gonna be ten minutes, and I approached Jason Goldwatch, and he said, man, that's a lot to ask. Ten minutes. Yeah. And then we ended up shooting in Death Valley. We shot in Vegas. We shot in Oakland. We shot in Frisco. We shot in L.A. And it ended up being a 37-minute movie, yeah. mini movie. And it's um, it's our first psychedelic hip hop movie, which comes from the you know inspiration from Alejandro Jodorowsky and Pink Floyd. You yeah. know what I mean? So we did that. And then um, at the same time, I was scoring a film called Divinity, which is um which was another independent film. And when I was doing Divinity, I noticed they were doing three screenings a night in L.A. And they was doing screenings everywhere. And I was like, I asked the publicist, like, why are you doing so many screenings? He's like, we got to find our audience with films like this. Right. So I was like, hmm. So I took a page out of the book and how they was marketing these independent films. Like, I'm going to do the same thing. So I brought it to like 15 cities and four countries, you know, just rented theaters for free, let everybody watch it for free. And um, now we're finally releasing it on Friday. So you know, congratulations, yeah, man! Thank you, thank you. I got, I got, to, I got the preview view. Oh yeah, you got the, the the preview. It's tight the way you put all the music in with it, and like just the idea of it and the concept. What we did is we shot three music videos and put the music videos on the TVs in the movie. Yeah, 
so they're kind of like mixed in as part of the you know it's like in, in the dope house the, yeah one of the songs is on the tv you know what i mean yeah. it's playing at the same time and it cuts in and out of the videos and in the um in the bonus we're giving the movie away for free this friday but there's a bonus that has a paywall and that one you can see the original videos that you don't see the complete videos in the movie so right shit came out good man that's is that, dope is this your first film you've done that i've made that i'm in yeah but yeah. But, but scoring no like oh, so, like uh, mute, like music wise. Like, I'm talking about like uh, overall. Did you no, this, this? this year I did a um, Soderbergh movie called Divinity. I scored a complete movie, and then I just did a Mel Gibson movie that's coming out soon that's called cool. The Informant. I did that, those two, and then this was my third film last year. That's meaning like a uh, score, like because you know how so I remember buying the score for certain albums, like but it was like the classical music. It was like that's the, what it is. Is exactly. that what, is yeah, that yeah, what yeah, you're yeah. doing? There's so the, it's not the soundtrack. No, so the Soul Assassins Three album was the soundtrack. Okay. The score is just all original score music, you yeah. know, all yeah, that's strings, all the- strings, everything to fit the mood where, where it's changing. Like as soon as you move and you walk this way, the tension starts building. You know, that's the mean? psychological then, then, aspect. Then the too. dog pops out, and then the fucking ah, you know, and yeah, all. Yeah, when you're shit. supposed to scare someone, you play ominous, yeah, you know, type of shit back there. The, those those kind of people who do that kind of stuff is, are very underrated, but they they really don't get the credit they deserve because down to everybody who does like games. To anybody who does like real movies that haven't done right, like let's just say a horror movie, because I don't really like horror movies because I get anxiety, bro. Sometimes if it's done right, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll be like, man, why do I get me? I know it's not real, but why does it get me? Or like video games, I got the headphones on. You're playing Resident Evil. Those people who make those little sounds, those score music, it's like they really set the tone oh, psychologically yeah. for the consumers. It's a you lot know? of work. Man. I never would have thought you'd a lot be, of work. Yeah, you'd be the guy doing that. And, for and, and music, we, music can change the whole tone in the movie. Oh, it does. You know what I mean. And it can set the set the tone. Can like, make it or break it. That's it. Yeah, you know what I mean. It can make it or break it. And I've done bits and pieces, and I've done big Hollywood shit, which I didn't like because you do Hollywood, you the director, the producer, and the studio. So the director and the producer would like, it, but then the studio would come and go. Ah, we don't know. And there's some 24 year old girl that's like telling you, well, that it's she's telling you what hip hop should sound like. And I was like, I can't deal with big Hollywood. There's too many cooks in the kitchen. I don't want to paint by numbers. So the next when an independent film comes across. I'll, I'll mess with the word whenever the director's like, do you? And that's where Divinity came in. Damn. And where's that available? That's that just came out. The, yeah, the Divinity just came out. It's in the theaters. It's on streaming services now. The, but it's you a said, sci-fi film with the, Stephen Dorff. The one before that? The one you said you did the score before that? What was that one called? That was Divinity. Divinity? And yeah. that's, you said this one's everywhere? Yep, Divinity's everywhere. The Mel Gibson movie will be out this year. And then, you know, um, Death Valley. That was dope. The Divinity one uh, is great on shrooms. I listened to the soundtrack. I want to peep that. Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. That 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 one's ill. Yeah, it's a sci-fi movie about yeah. the future, about taking a pill that you that this elixir that you live forever. Mm-hmm. Would you take it? If it was real, I might think about it. Because that's a pretty big commitment. <laughs> that is. Yeah. yeah I don't think like, I could do it. But like, imagine, you know, the possibilities when you have something like that. I mean, but just like at some point, you don't think you're gonna get sick of it, bro. Like you just you're gonna get sick. Of yeah, it. Just, like you just whack yourself, you know, at some. Point. <laughs> or you just take a break. You yeah. know what the thing would be is, are we the only ones who get the pill? I don't want to live and watch everybody. Oh, everybody got die. in the movie. You know everybody got it. Oh, good. It puts That's you in put you in perfect yeah. shape. You don't. Okay. You look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. You don't. But it's for everybody. You live forever. Good. The what only it, thing is, you couldn't procreate. Once yeah, because the world would get overpopulated. True. Because if you're living you're forever, not dying, yeah. Mm. That's not a bad. Pretty deal, interesting. Though. I just wouldn't want to live forever <laughs> if everybody else was dying because you don't want to constantly oh, nah, watch the seen. people you love die. But what if you have made a kid before and then you take the pill? Do they kill your kid? <laughs> what? <laughs> like I'm just like I'm just saying because it's like you can't procreate. So. It kind of reminds me of uh, that movie Logan's Run back in the day. Like yep. uh, they wouldn't let you live past thirty. You would they would kill you, you, smoke you at thirty. Like, yeah, they'll smoke you. So that kind of hmm. that's yeah. like the Giver, the book. There's like a, a certain age you reach, die. Yeah, in Logan's in Logan's Run. Yeah, yeah. They didn't want you getting past thirty years old. And Logan ran. Yeah. Cause he, well, didn't he, want get, he didn't want to get whacked. I would kind of like prefer the limitless pill over like living forever, bro. Cause sometimes you get sick of this ish. Sometimes, <laughs> like I'm you not know, saying it happens well, all look, the time, look, bro. Here's the like, thing: if if you live forever, you see way too much, and that might make you sick of the shit. Cause like you see how the world evolves in in, in its good form and its horrible form. She would get born. Yeah. Yep. 
Do people, yeah, what? You get, I think I get bored. I get bored. Yeah. Bored or yeah, or yeah. you know just tired of the shit. Period. Because you could right. technically like see every see the whole world and then be like, once you're done, you're like, all right, bro, what now? <laughs> where's the Where's the <laughs> opposite pill? <laughs> yeah, like, well, that could that's a lot of those. Yeah, there's yeah, plenty there's, of those. There's a lot of those. There ain't gonna be no lack of those. Are you gonna do like any um, uh, aside from the screenings, any like you know performances like? Based off of off, off of the movie with some of the artists, you know, I was trying to put a performance together with um, Breakestra, which is the hip hop band that plays all the breaks, yeah, and get all the rappers. But it, and I was trying to put it together myself, but it turned into a lot of work. So I was like, you know what, I'm gonna save this for another time. So probably not. I'm, I'm dropping the album, and then we got all the characters. We made toys of all the characters. They yeah. drop on Friday. Then the original score drops on um, next Wednesday with five new bonus tracks, hip hop tracks. So all that'll drop next week. But I'm just putting the time into the energy into behind um, promoting this shit. Because, you know, you put all the work, you put the time. It took us six months to make it. Even to down to the gunshots and the dog running and the car screeches, all that shit, right? You had to put all that, all that back in. To, and, um, so I just want to make sure I bring it to the people the right way and, and, and give, it to do, give it the due that it deserves, man. Because um, I watch a lot of brothers doing cool things, but they just throw them on YouTube and then they just... Whoosh, they're gone in three then it days. Goes away, yeah. I was like, so I brought this to YouTube. They said it was too dangerous. I brought it to Amazon. They said it's too controversial. So then I just built my own page, put it on soulassassins.com, and um, we're gonna give it away for free on our own like that without having to deal with the with the politics of these other dudes. Completely is, independent. Is that where the action figures are gonna be at too? They'll be on soulassassins.com. Yep. Check those out. It's, it's complete independence. Everything's in the self-funded, self-independent. Yeah. Everything I do now, self-funded, it's all 100% independent. Hire Better, them. right? If we got publicists, anything we do, we pay for our own vinyls, pay for everything, do it all ourselves, fly ourselves, everything. Then we got, then you got full control, you know. Cuts out the red tape, too. Because with this, the bottom line wasn't about making money. It was just doing creative and having a creative outlet and doing something different and just expanding and stretching the creativity. Because, you know, we've done a lot of shit. Yeah. And then it comes down to, like, how do I excite myself at this point? Right. That's, that's Another video don't do it for me. It's just like another video. That's right? always the challenge when you, when you do have longevity, right, is how do you reinvent and make it interesting for yourself. Right. Because, you know, when you've been, you know, doing it 30 some odd years, you've done a lot of things. Mm -hmm. You know, I and, feel like you could do like, um, you, you know how like people, they do hero movies all the time. I feel like you can make like a dope villain origin movie. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, like a dope take on like a villain. But like, it has to be like a pretty like fucked up villain. Who's a, who's a fucked up villain that you would. It's not in, really like your imagination. If, if it's got to be like a realistic aspect, like somebody who actually does the Punisher, right? Because the comic, this motherfucker was brutal. He was out there just killing people, or like Daredevil or Venom, something yeah. like that. These like they they've done a very soft approach on them. But if you really like read the comics, you're like, yo, these are some of the few motherfuckers who are out there like snapping necks and not just letting people like, yo, take them to jail. You yeah, know? they were dark. They were dark. There yeah. were dark characters in Marvel and DC. Oh yeah, they was dark. But have you hey, have you checked out the 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 shit on Amazon Prime called The Boys? No, I heard about it. Though. Oh man, you should check. You about shit. the third person to tell me that? You should check it out, man. It is. It's like that super. It's superhero shit, but like unfiltered, uncensored, like flawed. Mm. You know what I mean? Like nothing, nothing like DC or Marvel. Yeah. The term. <laughs> yeah. It's, Herogasm. It's it. You know, it's it's not like if you had young kids, you wouldn't be watching it with your young kids. Right. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, you know, you have adult kids. Yeah, you watch them with them. But, yeah, very flawed. Just human shit, huh? Yeah. Like superheroes, but that are just real humans. Yeah. And they're flawed. Big time. <laughs> yeah. You like, think, you the think deviations you, are crazy. Muggs, you think you'd get into, like, uh, writing a screenplay and doing the music or getting into more of the story part of it? It's a lot of work. I'm not a writer. I'm more of an idea dude. Right. Like I could come up with the ideas all day, but I would need to sit with a writer because once I it's funny because I got the ideas. But a lot of times when I sit to write, I freeze Same. and I could mm -hmm. I could dictate it. But, you know, but I, I'm not I'm not a writer. I know that. So I'd have to definitely sit with a writer, but I'm more of an, on the creative side. But I got ideas for days so I could sit there and build with you and come up with the character and the characters back their origin story and their, what their temperament is and. You know what their moods are, and what their habits are, because you got to go deep into every character, you know, and break it yeah. down like that. So I can get into that part, but it's a lot of work, man. Yeah, you know I'm saying this took six months to just to get it done, and I was like, I stopped everything to do this, and when I was done, I was kind of exhausted. I was like, God damn, I didn't even realize 
how exhausting it was to do this shit. Yeah. And it definitely takes a special type of talent to be able to take those thoughts and put it into writing because I'm the same way. I could think of great things, but you need to be able to take that thought and properly articulate it on paper. It's it's not always easy to translate. Well, movies start with a good script. So if the script is shit, the movie's going to be shit. Yeah. Right? So it starts yeah. with a good Fact. script. Now, yeah. now it's being able to take the script and turn it into a story and, and make it interesting. But we didn't even have a script. We had ideas. Yeah. So when we was done with the movie, there was no dialogue. So we went backwards and added the story and added the dialogue. So, you know, it was extra work for us. But then we, what we did, what was interesting is we had somebody um, telling the story and we used um, Ray Liotta's voice, but in AI. Because at first, Goldwatch, he sampled Goodfellas. And I said, nah, man, that's just played out. That sounds like some 2002 mixtape shit, you know, when they was using yeah. the Goodfellas shit all the time. I yeah. don't want to use nothing, but we can use his voice if we write original original shit and how does that work you have to license the rights to it like how does that so we went back and wrote it It, if you listen to it it's Ray Liotta it's a little bit off but nah we there was no there's no it's like when streaming first came out like with Napster it's kind of this new thing right nobody's really regulating it regulated figure it out and we're under the radar too but when you listen to it because I wanted that narration like Goodfellas but with original dialogue to fit the story so that part came out pretty it's pretty ill man yeah I thought it was dope man and uh, if you get a chance to check it out, y'all should go check that shit out immediately. Um, and the soundtrack for it, slapping. Soul Assassin's 3, the soundtrack. The original score will be out. And then, you know, Soul Assassin's 3 is killing it. Brand new song with Be Real. MC Ren, Ice Cube on that motherfucker. Hey, that, hey, to, hey, that was like the, to me, one of the dopest beats for, you know, for the three of us to get on for sure. Like, you know, when, when you send that to me, I, I was like, oh, man, I'm snapping on this immediately. And then when you hit me up to, to like, see if Cube would get on it, you know, it was just at the right moment because we were doing shows with him, and I played him the beat before I played him yeah. anything else, and he was like, oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Oh, when I sent when I heard it, I was like, oh, this sounds like some B-real shit. It sounds, like, old but new at the same time. Yeah. It kind of, like told the line but then it, we sat we sat on it for three or four months and i was like all right what am, what can we do with this to make it different like we could do songs all day but what's going to do some shit to make everybody go what the fuck is that how'd you do that then it was like um cube and, and i got ren i got ren and b yeah. hooked up cube and i was trying to get dre or snoop to do the intro and they said yeah but it's just you know how time i know out. how that goes yeah so i was trying to get that i was like yo cypress and nwa now nah, that shit was ill man it was close. <laughs> we got two of them. Everybody's still man. on point, man. Yeah. It just sounded ill. Yeah, Ren fuck. was dope. Yeah. In a re- in his relaxed delivery, d- delivery, you know, because usually he's got more of a, a, a forceful attack on, mm-hmm. on his his rap. Um, On this one, he sort of, like, talked it, like, on some grown man shit, and he yeah. sounded awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That the, shit, he, they, all y'all sounded crazy as fuck on that shit. And the joint on there, for me, also is the Joker's Wild, CeeLo. CeeLo, yeah. that's Oh, a, yeah. Man. Dope. Every, that's everything dope. about that, everything about that, from music to lyrics, everything, y'all killed that. That's a funny-ass story, because I, um, I was digitizing all my cassettes, all my K-Day tapes from, like, 88, 89, all my beats from 92 to 97. I had all my dats and shit, so I digitized about three, 400 beats, and that was one of them. So I just got everything back and I was playing it and then I just was like, oh shit, I was in the studio smoking weed and I just put that on Instagram, that beat, because it came straight off a cassette, right? Right. CeeLo hit me up, yo, I need that beat right now. All right, damn, all right. Shot it to him, I didn't hear nothing. And then about three or four months later, he just sends me the shit. He's like, yo, I want you to have an open mind right here, but I'm coming from the point of view as a cholo. He goes, I love the West Coast, I love the cholo culture. I, the West Coast is my favorite shit. I feel like in my past life, I was from the West Coast, and um, I just want to pay respect and pay homage to everybody out there. So that's it. when you listen to it, I was like, damn, he dialed that shit in. And he snapped in. Let Yo, me tell you yeah. what. I thought that was so dope. Because, hey, look, look you and I and the rest of us that, that grew up here, right? Um, I mean, you went back and forth, but you grew up in areas, and you saw this, where there were some homies that were black that were cholos you know right. they, they were from a uh you know especially when you lived on neighborhood the, especially when you lived on the border like even grape street was like mexicans was in the, the yeah in the, it's the right when you live on the right borderline there. you know shit was different and, and occasionally you would see that well you know what i mean um 
Like who's in Pendleton? Yeah, just like you yeah, would see Pendleton. Mexicans gangbanging with with Bloods or Crips. Yeah, when you I just, see Mexicans in wearing purple, Grape Street, you know what I mean? Yeah, same shit. I mean, you you would see it like you know if you grew up in that hood, chances are you hung or rode with motherfuckers in that hood, right. whether you were you know, and it didn't really matter what you were if you grew up there. You know what I mean? They accepted you, and so when CeeLo CeeLo did that. It made sense to me because we grew up seeing things like that. As as you know, we didn't. You don't see it all the time out there, but you do see it if you grow up here, right? Uh-huh. And that so it made sense to me, man. And then he just killed it. He like, killed it. And yeah, you know, then you get the donkeys out there when you do interviews. They trying yes. to. Is this cultural appropriation? I'm like, man, shut the fuck up. But you're trying to stir this shit up, and then of course that's the headline on the YouTube with the yeah. bullshit. I was like, why? This is nothing but love and respect, man. Like, yeah. motherfucker loves this culture. And matter of fact, he wanted to do a whole album based off of that. So we got about five songs, but he's just coming from a West Coast point of view. Yeah. West Coast gangster point of view. That's dope. You know, like five joints with him right now. That that co- people, that reaction of cultural appropriation BS to try to go, that's an American thing, bro, because nobody's like policing the Vietnam fools dressed as cholos or the Japanese fools. Yeah. And they're, yeah. Ra- and they're rapping like or funk, anything. Funk it's us here. Stuff like that. It's just, or anybody who's yeah. not Italian, that's yeah. all their shit's Italian. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. You know, yeah, so everybody's a Gambino. Uh, this, yeah. you know, everything. It's like, oh, but but that's cool. You know, <laughs> right. it, it works both ways, yeah. man. But yeah. you know, it, I don't even play into that because I don't even look at people for race. I never have. Is you cool or you ain't, man? I grew True up that. with everybody where I lived in New York and where I lived in L.A. I grew up with every kind of motherfucker all day. So I'm shit, I never even even noticed that shit. Really, Queens is the most ethnically diverse place oh, in the world. Period. So that's a fact. You know, it was like, and it was like yeah. Irish, Polish, Italian, Puerto Rican, Dominican, Trinidad, Black, everything. Just Guyanese, Jamaican, you and name it. And you wasn't, everybody. you was, you wasn't in, 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 in Queens, it was funny because you wasn't white. He was like, oh, he's that's Polish. Right. That's, that's a Greek kid. That's how Italian. You was something. Yeah, you were an ethnicity, not that just That just sounds white. like a bunch yeah. of different foods to me. And it, it is. is. <laughs> like, yeah, like, it is. And <laughs> you could eat in <laughs> Queens, yeah. son. And, boy. Yeah, like I'm listening to it. I was like, damn, there's that many people. I was like, imagine you're high and hungry out there, bro. It's multi, hey, it's multicultural. It no, no one talks about yeah. it, but it's multicultural. It was only when I moved here where it was black, white, and Mexican. Same, you know. And I was like, "Whoa!" I'd never seen that was, type, and it was yeah. just real. Like where I moved, it was ninety nine percent Mexican in Bell Gardens. Yeah, there was I think one black kid that came to our school like in tenth grade, but it was just you know two Chinese, and that was it, and and, and two rednecks and me. You know what I mean, so it was it was L A was mad segregated, but yeah. remember in L A with this, speaking of the segregation is when they started doing the bussing. Yeah. In the eighties. They would well, bust people. That? So they yeah. would take inner city kids and like like South Central kids and bust them to Taft High School in the valley. And that's where Cube and J D they was bust to where Everlast and Danny Boy went to school deep in the valley. So they bust South Central kids. Yeah, there W C too. And they would bust white kids to other schools. So they was trying to like, you know, mix it up a little mix it up. Mix yeah. it up a little bit, you know what I mean? But Nobody's never done a movie about the that situation in LA yet, because I never no. heard about that shit. No, they haven't. The bus and shit. I mean, they touch on it in little places, but it, it's not like it's it's a small part of it. Was it was a big fucking deal in the big, 80s. But it was a big deal, yeah. yeah. It was. When you was coming yeah. from South Central to Taft? Yeah. Hell that yeah. Are. A lot of a lot of kids that lived in like war, you know, war torn areas, let's say, in terms of gang banging, were getting bust out there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Especially the the ones that, you know, were like about the school, like they're actually trying to do this. Cause in some of the schools in, in in the embattled areas, man, it was tough because gangbang was happening in the schools, like at Fremont, for instance, man. Um, yeah. A couple of yeah. my homies went there, and pff, the gangbanging was happening in the halls. You know what I mean? Or, or right outside of the school or in, yeah. any, anywhere around the damn school. You know what I mean? It, it, and they, they wanted to, like, take a certain element and put them somewhere else to maybe – that shit sort of like squashes that shit out or lessens the the probability of gang violence in the schools you know so some some were getting bust out because they you know they were actually going to go get a good education over there and some of them bust out to get like rid of them yeah oh you know all sorts of different reasons but and and also some of them schools were over overwhelmed absolutely you know i went to a track school you remember those where it's that like- That started right, I think, I, I was supposed to graduate in 86, but I think it might have started right, like right the year after the yeah. start of the track shit, where you went to school for three months and then got off. Yeah. 
I'm yeah. glad I didn't have that. That I like, was I like the horrible. Sentence. That was horrible. I went from a regular school system to a track system, and I fell. You were supposed track. to graduate in like '88, right? Yeah, about '88. Yeah, and I fell off track, baby. So that that slows you down. Like, I it was heard weird. About that. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird. Well, because the schools are overwhelmed. And, and like and we those, had we had forty kids in our class, forty two kids, and yeah. some of them in high school. Like overstack. Yo, that was yeah. a lot of. So they got to like they got to you know bring in certain kids at a certain time, and the teachers are are the most overwhelmed because they don't get breaks too much. You know what I mean? They got to teach all three tracks. So when these kids go off for their whatever three months or whatever it is, right, and the new track comes in, they're dealing with a whole new set of kids, whole new attitude. Got to get a whole new momentum down, and they don't get. They weren't getting paid that much back then. I don't get shit. For that. They still, still, don't. still don't. They still <laughs> don't. <laughs> That's why there's a lot of dumbass kids coming out of school because you know the teachers are too overwhelmed. They, they 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 can't give every kid the help they need, so they just pass them to get them on to high school and yeah. let those high school teachers deal with them. They don't get the resources they need for for books for things like that. <laughs> they don't get paid enough, and they're badass kids. It, so now you're dealing with a bunch of badass kids. You ain't getting paid. They ain't trying to learn. It ain't any. And the high schools that are on the track system too. That's hard. Yeah. Too. Most people are trying to get you know get their kids to a better school and get them out of that track system because it's just you know the teachers don't have enough time to spend with any one kid. Not at if, all. You yeah. know what I mean? If not if the all. kid is not developing as quickly as the class. You know, it's hard to do when you got so. forty kids in there. It take, send them to trade school if he send them to trade yeah. school. Hey, bro, we need a lot of plumbers. All right, bro, those supposed to get paid. They, school's been telling you a lot of that BS for. A oh, while. we need some more plumbers because yeah, they charge too yeah. much. Yeah, yeah bro, electricians we, too. We, we need, need more plumbers, electrician, electricians, baby. bro. We need trades, bro. Come mechanics. Yeah. You know how hard is it to get an appointment in mechanics for anything, bro? Fools are flooded, bro. Come on, dog. Like, not everybody needs to be on social media. It's bro. hard to find a good one. Hey, you could be the, yeah. the, you know, the star on social media of electricians. I'm the rock star electrician, dog. Follow me on that. You know what? You know, some different. of those guys that do, I do follow, <laughs> I and then I've, I've seen some of that stuff, and I was, they're like, how to fix this? And there's like usually one or two people that you'll follow. Like, yeah, have you ever had this problem at home? And step by step, bro, you'll learn a few things. You know, electricians get paid too. The like, mobile car wash people. Yeah. Any, any, any of that hustle. But listen, le- electricians got to be on game because one wrong little yeah. move, done. Well, when you're like a real union worker, like in New York, the highest paid union is Local 3, and that's the electrical union. Mm-hmm. They're the highest paid. But yeah, you need to know your trade. You burn a building down. And or, you, or, or melt yourself or, in half, son. Yeah. <laughs> True that. <laughs> you don't want none of these, man. Nah, man. Yeah. Forget about it. You got to... You got any other um, projects in the in the chamber right now? Damn, yes, sir. You got probably about fifteen, huh? About sixteen albums in the works. Oof. Some have two or three songs. Some have fourteen, fifteen. Um, the ones at the top of the heap right now. We dropping this kid Mooch from um, Rochester, New York. Mad, real, real underground, real grimy. He's an underdog. I like him. Um, got talent. Um, album's done. I just sent it to Brian Big Bass, the master, who's retired, but. He's still doing my stuff because I gave him um, my season Laker tickets to win those finals when they played, oh, really? when they played Portland when they was oh, in the finals. Remember, I yes. gave I gave him some tickets and he's like, "Anything you need for the rest of your life." I oh got my you. god, what a deal that so is! So he, he see he's mastering that right now. So that's coming next. And he's then, retired except for you. Well, I know Dre and M said you can't retire, so they built him a studio and said just do our shit. Hmm. So he does that and he's doing my shit. So oh, that's, that's cool. all he does now. But he's 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 the man behind. Every Death Row record, every Dre record, um, bunch of records. Big bass, you know, big the, Brian, big bass. All the big sound. Yes, that, yeah. and then, um, then after that, will be um, TF, TF down with Schoolboy Q, who's probably my favorite, one of my favorite West Coast MC for sure, and one of my favorite MCs in the game right now. Coming up, you know, you probably hear him on Schoolboy Q's records on a few of them. I got him. He's on the Soul Assassins record as well. And then after that, we doing um. Um, champagne for lunch the, the 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 second installment of the mad lib mayhem mugs album we did last year champagne for breakfast we're doing champagne for lunch now that's pretty much done and then um rome streets um down with griselda records and then um you know a bunch of different songs and different shit but those are the three i'm kind of gearing up i'm putting timelines in so i'm pretty i got all my releases set up pretty much through july right now so That's I just got me, me and one assistant, and we do everything ourselves, man. Everything from the marketing 
I was up last night with with the with the web team doing the marketing till like eleven for this movie coming out, you know. So we just do it all ourselves and um have fun, you know what I mean? Have a good time. The thing with the, the thing these days is you know is like it's just having a lot of sh- putting a lot of shit out where the checks ain't like they was. No, yeah. You know, I know a kid that puts out he's probably got a hundred albums out. You know, he makes two hundred dollars per album a month. Mm. But do the math, you know, he's making a lot of money. Yeah. You know, it's almost so, like you got to put out more. You put out more, you get a little less, but you put out more. So I put out 37 projects in the last six years. So my goal is to put out 50 in the next five years. And then, um, you know, just stay creative, stay having fun, man. It's like, That's the shit. man, I'm having some of the most fun I'm having, just being creative, not having to deal with a major label or expectations and doing what the fuck we want to do, how yeah. we want to do it, and just make movies like this and then see what, see what the next unexpected thing is that comes along and just like... Just do fun shit, man. You know that was the thing. I was I was talking about this uh, a, a couple weeks ago in terms of technology, right? Um, back in the day when we were, you know, making our first albums and stuff like that, it it seemed like we were only making music when we had to make an album. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We weren't just like on the off time making music because we were too busy. We we're on tour and, and and oh, it was a different way of thinking and it was yeah. a different world and a different process. Yeah, know? it was right. hard to make records back then. Yeah, and now technology has made it so easy that like one, you don't need a label to do it, and you don't, you don't have need a to. studio. Yeah, you don't need a mi- recording engineer. You don't need a mixing. You don't engineer. need a, you don't a budget. Need a mastering engineer. You yeah. don't need a. So even if you made a record and you didn't have distribution. You can, like you could you know, give it to the world tomorrow where I remember pressing 500 vinyls and got them in two stores and go, how do I get this shit out there, man? Yeah. yeah. There's no way to, you know, now it's easy as fuck. Yeah. The kids ain't clearing samples. Every sample's on YouTube. Yeah. You can go to who sampled it right now and, and it tells you who sampled it and what the sample is and what the record is. Shit's easy as fuck right now. So if you ain't killing it right now, you need to check yourself. Or or at least, you know, being consistent, putting putting things out. Keep putting things out. And you know my motivation to switch. Like I don't. I'm not trying to be famous. I don't want. I don't. I mean, you're already that. that. But but I mean, you know, a lot of it it depends what your motivation is. I don't. I don't. I don't. I'm not trying to. I ain't doing it for the money. I ain't doing it for the, for that either. Doing it for the art. I'm doing it because I love this, and it's just I need to do this. I'm still having a good time. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's it's like when some artists put out mixtapes. You know, they ain't getting paid on the mixtapes, but you know they're working on their verses, working on their styles, and like put something out. It's different for the art of it you know what i mean for the passion of doing it so because i mean you know like you know as well as i do sometimes when you're putting out an album you may have to wait no matter when you yeah. turn that shit in you know red tape happens they got to clear samples or they want to push the date because these artists are coming out and they don't want to compete with with that in the market at the same time and all these mm-hmm. different things whereas now you could move as freely as you want and and that is that is everything right there. It is, man. I mean, and I think you get better. It's like you told me a long time ago, man. The more you do shit, uh, the more innate becomes, and and you get better at it because you're constantly building by consistently doing it. Like yeah. an athlete trains to do their particular sport. And you got to keep learning and keep being uncomfortable. Like if you're an athlete and you play basketball and you don't have a left hand in the off season, just work on that left hand. That's you right. know what I mean. So. Uh, if I'm in between something, I, f- I work with like the kid Mooch, an under an underdog, just because I'm all, I don't want to stop because I don't want it's hard. Sometimes it's hard to get back into it, so it's like getting back into the gym. And it's a muscle. I think creativity is a muscle. When yeah. you stop, it's hard to it's and even it's, for me, it's gets harder and harder to start again. So I don't want to stop. You can't get off the horse for too long. Nah, it's it becomes like a lazy river, right? You get yeah. out the lazy river, you get a drink, you talk to someone. You jump back in, everybody's way the fuck over there. Or yeah. They, yeah. they way it, over there, so you can't really, you don't want to stop. It's a trip that Billy Joel has released a new a new single, like a pop single, just recently. Have you heard about yeah, that? Yeah, and it's good. And That's he was he was good. speaking to that. He was like, man, I had done it for so many years. I like it, I got bored of it, and I just felt like I could do it. I didn't like the sound of my voice. I didn't want to hear it. And then he just turned it off for I don't know how many years. And at what, how old is Billy Joel right now? He's probably in his 60s, mid 60s. Maybe 70s. Maybe 74. 74. You become like, what's the motivation? And that's what I was saying. Some people, it's the ego. Like, okay, look at me. Like some people want want to be in the magazines. They still want to shine. Some people need the bread. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
And it's like, once you achieved all your goals and you got it, you kind of like, oh, there's more to life. Let me go on vacation. Let me pet my dogs. Let me raise my kids. You know, so it's like, what's the motivation? But he found it again. Some what? people never find it again. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think it's when you love the art, that's the motivation. Mm -hmm. You know, because think about how many starving artists that just do it. They're not getting paid, but they love to do this shit. And people that maybe past the peak of when they should have, you know, maybe gotten a deal and gone out there, but music is everything so you know they love to do it the art yeah public. we never i mean i thought us i figured I, my favorite groups were selling about a hundred thousand records when we was working i figured long as we got respect from our peers i was happy i figured we sell a hundred hundred fifty thousand records and i'd have been happy as fuck be you good, know what i mean right? long as like eric sermon heard my shit krs1 mm -hmm. chuck d and they go that shit's hard i already won once that happened i was like my goals are reached yeah. you know what i mean is yeah. there a genre that you would be interested in in messing with because that project that eight bit Atari, yeah, that I vibe on that a lot. That's it's a dope, dope thing. But is there a genre that you would want to venture into that you haven't quite touched yet? I don't think so, man. Because I've done like rock, like when we did Rock Superstar, it was almost like fuck y'all, y'all doing rock rap. Watch how we do this shit. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So it was, we know we can do rock. I know I could do. You know, um, EDM. EDM. I did that just just to learn the computer because I, I was still on the drum machines, and I was like, "How are these dudes doing this production?" They go, "Oh, they're on the computers." And I, you know, when the when the Pro Tools came out, I stayed on the two inch. Then when I moved over to the computer, I was like, "Fuck!" So I took time and just made it an electronic record just just to learn because I it gave me a motivation to learn. You know what I mean? Mm. And then um pretty much done it all and then with with atari was it's just it's just an experiment for me it's all just an experiment in technology so i got one of the top dudes in web3 that that is um got crypto punks so crypto punks is the the first nfts ever invented is a crypto punk okay after that came board apes and then everything mm -hmm. else you've seen so these are the genesis so these will probably always hold their weight if any nft does and um so I said, let me turn one of the NFTs into the artist. Where I actually make the beats, but my fan base gets a little weird when I do something out too outside the box. So I was like, let me make her the artist that I signed. and Because I love lo-fi. I love to listen mm -hmm. to it. Yeah, lo fi is mm -hmm. dope. So I was like, let me make her the lo-fi artist. So I got about 40 tracks that I haven't even released with her. But So she's the artist. And um, I got somebody on TikTok that's her and, you know, just building her whole world with her that's talking to the little kids that that's on TikTok because I don't fuck with TikTok. And it's more of an experiment to keep me in the loop with the future technology of Web3. And um, it keeps me exercising in the technology because, you know, Web3 is here and it's not going away. And right. I remember when I first seen it, I was like, man, get that shit the fuck out of here. But then I caught myself because I did that with the internet. When the internet came out and they was like, they're going to have a website and they're going to have a store. I was like, get the fuck out of here with that shit. And I was like, oh shit. I go, what happens when they pull the plug? And I said <laughs> yeah, the same exactly. shit. And then I go, you know what? Don't become that old motherfucker that's grumpy, that's complaining about technology because technology is not going away. It's not going away. There was motherfuckers with horse stables that watched the car drive by one day and they was like, man, fuck that car. <laughs> yep. And then when I seen myself do that with the internet, I said, don't do that again because this is the internet. The difference is with Web3 and Web2 is we get to own the shit this time where Facebook owns it, Google owns it, YouTube owns it. We get to participate in ownership this time. Web1 was when you would read Time Magazine, and that's all you can do on the internet is read the magazine and the blog. Web read the two, articles, yeah. Web 2 is where we're at now, where everything's interactive. You can post videos and photos and talk on it. Web 3, it's going to be 3D, but we're actually going to own the platforms, and we get to buy the coins to own the platforms where we don't get to participate in ownership at this time. So I was like, you know what? Learn this shit and get ahead of this shit. So that's where Atari comes in to keep me ahead of it because the people that I'm partnering with are way advanced in that world so it's just like you know what i mean stay uncomfortable keep learning and technology's always here to stay right but always be out of the box too yeah you know so i like it, my fans ain't ready for because they're not in that world yet but it's once they are i'll already be so far ahead like where i'm at but i'm going to be able to branch it but there's a lot of things right now that are branching um web 2 with web 3 so that's where it is where it's it's blockchain agnostic where everything's being able to go back and forth but until it's something invented on the phone where everybody and grandma could jump on it you know um it's still a little bit of ways we're early we're in the pong day still but it's yeah. coming but it's coming you know it's coming um, it's around the corner yeah it's a, it's 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 right there man it's right there you know and it's not going to be one technology it's going to be like 
like Uber, Uber wouldn't exist without Google Maps and PayPal, right? And it's always those third-party things that branch off of two other things. So there's a lot of interesting things going on in tech. So I stay up on tech. I read every day tech. I'm up on, I'm, I talk to a bunch of people. I'm up on a bunch of blogs just to stay up on tech. And the shit is so future, like from what the regular man gets to understand that I'm just want to implement it in everything we're doing yeah. and, and be ahead of it and not have to go to some company, that middle company, to tell me what the fuck's going on because they have their own motivations. So I'm trying to stay ahead of the game right now. There's always that. Always them donkeys. <laughs> like, remember when weed got popular, there was the weed companies that, like, yep. we'll get you a weed deal, buddy. We got you. Like, and they didn't give, us 40, know. give us 40%. We'll hook you up. And they didn't even know. <laughs> Most of those companies have failed miserably. They all did. Mm. Yep. Horrible. That sound effect was dope. <laughs> Man, fuck, what was I going to ask you right now? Um, everybody always everybody always asks me. I don't know why they ask me because I didn't produce, you know, none of those, none of the none of the songs like that, right, that, that they ask this question. The sampling insane. I know you get asked that shit. It's not a horse. It's not a horse. I try to tell people it's not a goddamn horse. Right. But I, heard I tell the, them I don't know what it is. I heard the Blazing Saddle. It's, it's could be. I mean, there's a lot of things that sound similar that I've heard. Even when you go on those sample things, they get a lot of shit wrong. There's a few right, right yeah. ones. There's a lot that are wrong. It's but. like when you go to lyric sites. Sometimes you see the phrases that they Lyrics put in are wrong. That ain't right. It's like, wait a minute. I did not say this right. <laughs> they butcher it. I'm over here trying to go back and reference some vocals, and it's like, wait a minute. That's not the goddamn And they're starting to pull samples, and I'm like, man, shut the fuck up about that one. Like, there's certain songs that they're asking me about. Yeah. Even, you know, some, and I was like, shh. No. I don't even want to say the word because I don't want to put it out there. Yeah, you can't. I'll talk about some shit and then all of a sudden the lawyer's calling me four days later about the shit you, I talked what about. They, what like, are you doing? I don't over even want to say the, that fucking name. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, no, man. I, I don't even get why anybody would ask that, like, in terms of, hey, what sample did you use on this? Because I think it's this. There's one. a lot of people that do that. Like, get the fuck out They have here. sites, bro, <laughs> called Who Sample It. Yeah, yeah who sample just, I remember it's, hearing about it's that. It's the worst shit ever. They're just like sample rats, but they're kids yeah. that. That's what the, all they do. Yeah. I mean, I know, like, the DJ Premier referenced that shit in one of his songs, man. Like, I hate it. Yeah, talk, talking. Well, yeah, everything talking we came shit, up with yeah. in our morals about the, in this culture and what it was about, it's like goes against all that shit, but then they want to claim this is what they're about. But it's like, no, you're going against all the morals of what this culture was built off of. Yeah. What do you think about, like, you see these reels these days, some people will, like, break down they're showing you, I don't know if everybody's seen it, but like they'll show you exactly where they got it, how they put it together. Like, what do you think about that? You think they're like, they shouldn't be doing that? Or, I don't, I mean, I don't mind. It's fucked up if this, I mean, it's if they didn't clear the sample and they're gonna get busted, right. that's fucked up. Yeah, like yeah. the sample no, rat, yeah, the, sa the sample yeah. rat shit, I can't stand. Like, I got, I finally got busted about five years ago for jump around. And it was a lawyer who never tried a case. He's an ambulance chaser. So he goes to these who sampled it sites and he sees who sampled it. Then he calls and sees if it was cleared. Oh, damn. So it was actually a chubby checker sample. And um, I was like, oh, fuck. I, everything. I, there goes my house. There goes my bank account. There goes the cars. There goes the fucking kids' fucking college fund. But then a, a few years before that, there was a law passed. They can only go back three years. Oh, good. We had a, one of the best sample lawyers out there. It so happens that the other lawyer never went to trial, never tried a case. So we got to be really aggressive with them. They only took 10% for me and 10% for Everlast. Cost us, you know, 300000 on the publishing, 300000 on the master. So about 300000 each. And still a hit, man. I was like, man, that was still the best investment I made. 300000 yeah. I had this song, but yep. they got us yeah. for it. And, um, you know... Then they, people are saying, is that Prince? Ah, ah, like, yeah. no, it ain't Prince. No. Pedal down, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> no. But yeah, the fact they could only go back three years is a blessing now. Yeah, that is a blessing, man. It is, bro. Because if they could go back 20 years, fuck. Did they, the change, that law, the did they change that law like recently? Like, they changed it a few years, probably about eight years ago, I want to oh, say. Because it's pretty goddamn unfair. Yeah. Yeah, it's very unfair. You know, uh, when we were one of the, I guess, 13 groups or artists that were getting sued by Sil Johnson. 20 million for an interlude. For an interlude. 45 second interlude that a, we never played live. Yeah, and a piece that he didn't even know. In the end, it was like... It was, was that lawyer with the long fucking hair, remember? Yeah. 
It's, it's, man, that those Yes, Phil mm-hmm. Sil Jackson's people tried to sue us for the interlude on Black Sunday for $20 million. They froze everybody's publishing checks for a couple years. Yep. And um, they ended up getting $300,000, and then they won for three hundred. And then they appealed it because the lawyer put so much money, so much time and energy into it. He, he probably felt 300000 wasn't enough, so he went back and appealed they lost the appeal. They lost their three hundred thousand dollars and had to pay all of our law fees. Yeah. So we ended up with nothing. But you know, it was weird when we when we turned the first album in, which was just fucking a million samples on it. Right? We was just kids making records. We didn't know nothing. Um, and I turned it into Chris Schwartz. He was like, "We ain't clearing this record because it'll never come out. We're just gonna put it out and deal with it later." Thank God we did. It's that. It's that. Um... <laughs> Don't ask permission, ask for forgiveness. <laughs> and I remember when we got sued for Duke of Earl by Gene Chandler, I seen his lawyer and it was $50,000 to clear the Duke of Earl. Then I shared that story with Cube one day. He was like, 50000 for a hit? He goes, I'll pay 50000 for a hit any day. All day. And I'm new. And I, I, I was like, oh, shit, yeah. Think about that. Yeah. I, never, I didn't think like that. I was just like, well, I didn't know I, what was well, 50000 we I was making 300 a week working construction, bro. I didn't know what $50,000 was. <laughs> we were very green back then. You know yeah. what I mean? If we had known better, that would have just been an investment. Because that is a low, like when you think about it, that, ain't shit. that ain't nothing. You know, and Sony would have just did that. Uh, but, uh, you know, hey, it worked I mean, out. they was hitting us for samples up to two, three years ago still for that first album. Yeah, yeah. Every now and then somebody just pops up. Hello. Even for insane Hello. that, that you know, for the I think I'm going crazy or something like that, right? Yes, and we have my make sure. I remember, I remember we take that off now. Yeah, we remember, have, we, we, yeah, we I took, took it off because they wanted a big chunk for that little piece for it's that like, little last piece. But what's good now is like if they catch you now, you don't got to take a million records off the shelves. You could just take it off the streaming sites, and then that's it. Yeah, and then re so, you know put it up without it. Because if you got to pull a million records off the shelves, it was Ooh. fucked up. Like when, when Dre and them had to pull that. Um, record with Rakim and, and, and Truth Hurts. Yeah. Uh, with that Indian sample, that was fucked up. Yeah, think about it, because when you press the volume of of uh, vinyl or CDs or whatever they're pressing at that moment, that's a lot. That's a loss. You can't, there's no taking that back. And then it, you, if you want to make up for that, you got to repress and stock again and hope that it's still hot enough for people to buy it. With yeah, but the, the digital I mean, world. Oh, just pull it it's off. It's easy. Pull it off. Put the one without it back on. No. Oh. In a day. In a day. That's that's the beauty of the technology. It is game. the beauty. I do love this new technology, though. You know, at first, I was like, I love yeah. it. There was a few years there that got a little weird, like, around 2005 was weird because Napster came out, and then, like, my worst underground records was probably doing 200, 300,000, and then all of a sudden, they were doing 10,000 because there was a time where... The digital took over, but there was no YouTube, there was no Apple Music, there was no Spotify, and and there was no digital distribution. It was just the Napster, and there was for like four or five years. And then the labels were like, "How do we put this shit out?" So there was a minute there they had to refine their footing and and the way this new world's going to work. I think they pretty much got it dialed in now. No, no, I think the next step is getting artists paid properly. the way they should get paid properly for yeah. um the streaming stuff, but. Number one, right now, though, streaming's only at 5% of its global potential, okay? So when streaming gets to 20%, 30%, we're always going to see our numbers come up. And once everybody gets a cell phone in this hand with this Starlink that, that, that they're hooking up right now, and everybody in the world has a phone, that's going to help a lot, too. And, and I know they, 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 some laws got changed that should be kicking in in the next few years. So, you know, next 5, 10 years, I think we're going to be getting paid a little bit better. On royalties, as it should. Because we weren't even at the, like, no artist was at the negotiation table with no. their labels for their streaming. I work. think the labels fucked up, too. I think, like, if the labels were smart, they would have, like, Columbia would have, you know how, like, um, Amazon has their own streaming service. Disney has their own streaming service. Columbia should have started their own streaming service. Atlantic should have started. Ooh. Warner Brothers should have started their own streaming service yep. early instead of leaving it up to Spotify and leaving it up to these other motherfuckers and leaving it up to... Apple and the other 15 streaming services, you know, I think we would be getting more money. They wouldn't have to go through a middleman. and Yeah, yeah, because they'd be retaining right. more money than Ooh, give you. 100%. Yeah. they still making good money. We're the ones getting fucked. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, we talk about that shit here. About, about a lot. Uh, quite a lot, because, I mean, it's, it's a thing. Problem. It's a problem. I mean, you know, when you think about it, you get a billion streams and you get 
or whatever whatever Snoop was saying. He said, I got a billion streams, but I got maybe 40 racks out of it. <laughs> that's I mean, ridiculous. That's pretty fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> ridiculous. There's a, that's there's ridiculous. You're not much advertising. The disparity there. He probably spent that like on just like probably merch and advertising. They're making the or money. We, Somebody's making the money. We ain't getting it yet. Yeah. We yeah. Exactly. They're getting it. Yeah, they're getting it all. It's it's crazy, man. But that's you know, that's the music industry, man. It's so they always find a way to fuck it up for you. Yeah. As the artist. That's why more more people are going independent these days. So that's why I tell motherfuckers, if you want to make money, be a banker. You know, if you want to, if you want to do art, make music. You might make some money, maybe. But if you want to really make money, go take a business class, fool. True. True, man. It's because it, it's, it's not an easy game, especially back in the day before all this technology shit. You know, if you, if you have, if you've established yourself, right, and you got a, 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 a audience that follows you, that gets down with you, supports you, like that, whether you got new records or not. Show pops up, they're going. Merch pops up, they're fucking with it. You know, you're fortunate in these times because you could utilize all the technology to like interact and, you know, have direct impact. But if you don't have that in place, man, the uphill climb that it takes to get to that, man, it's it's not easy, man. It ain't easy. It doesn't, you know, there, and there's no classes for this, although there should be. By now, there should be. Like, if you want to be an artist here, like, you know, hey, look, you got talent. A master class. You could yeah. sing, you could rap, you could write, you could play music or whatever it is that, that is your role or talent. That's awesome. But here, learn these things so that you could have what is called longevity in this day or, or a chance. Because it just doesn't matter how much talent you got. It doesn't necessarily mean you're going to hit no, it don't. or get on. I mean, how many talented people have we seen, like, it should have blown, but it they, something. It was something. always something, right? Maybe not marketable timing, or maybe they didn't call it. They didn't make that phone call. Or they, they didn't have the look. They missed that thing the next day. You no, know, they didn't have the look. Or they weren't responsible enough. Yeah. That yep. you know, because that there there's there's layers to it. You know what I'm saying? And with a little bit of luck, and a little bit of luck. Sure. Oh my God! All mixed up. Um, today's National Fettuccine. Fettuccine Alfredo Day, man. Oh shit! Delicious but fatty. Yes, that is very. Bad, man. Not really my favorite. Right uh, it, it's because it's it's you don't like the cream. No, no. Yeah, now nah, this is not my very favorite rich, either. Very rich. That's not my favorite. I mean, I would have it every now and then. It's all right. You know, it's okay. Um, and it says here Cobra Kai, um, new season in production. Hell yeah! Awesome. Word up, salute. I'd rather see that guy in that Cobra Kai than the Blue Beetle. That was what a waste of two hours. <laughs> that's cool. I like Miguel, man. I'm yeah, no, saying. no, I hear you. I hear you. Uh, hey, that's honesty, man. You know, everybody got an opinion. Uh, I haven't so, seen it yet. Nah. All right. Hey guys, did you know? On this day, 1962, Garth Brooks was born. Happy birthday, Garth Brooks. All right. I GB GB And did you know On this day in 1967 The legendary Kid Capri was born Happy birthday oh, Kid Kid Capri he's, he's been a Cypress Hill uh, supporter Since day one man Salute to Kid Capri And did you know On this day in 1974 Jay Dilla was born Rest in peace and happy birthday to Jay Dilla Legend And did you know on this day in 1979, Stephen Stills was the first rock and roll artist to record on digital recording equipment at the record plant in L.A. Wow. We did many sessions at the record plant. Nice place. Salute to Stephen Stills, man. Very cool dude and one of the dopest songwriters, man. Salute. Did you know on this day in 1980, Sugar Hill Gang dropped their first album, Sugar Hill Gang? One of the originals. One of the originals. First, you know, one of the first joints on, um, you know, the, probably the first joint on radio to represent hip hop music, oh, right? I'd say definitely. Yeah. Uh, definitely on K Day, right? I believe so. I bet on that. Yep. Did you know on this day in 2000, Big Pun passed away? Rest in peace to a oh. legend, Master Bar Spitter. One of my favorites, man. Yeah, he was dope. 
lot of styles were built off of his. Yeah. After his passing, you know, so many try to do his his uh, flex his style, man. Yeah, he had he one does. of the most fluid uh, rap styles out there. A lot of a lot of um, you know, multiple multiple mul- multiple syllable words impacted yeah. in a phrase. He was dope at that. Did you know? On this day in 2006, Jay Dilla dropped Donuts, his second studio album. Dilla's a legend, man. To the knowledge. And now, uh, let's check this out. Hey everyone, it's Marissa, tuning in live from Dr. Greenblum's new location in West LA. And I'm just here to tell you that we have some new drops. By Insane, we got Hindu Funk, got Lotto Mints, and by Dr. Greenblum's brand, we got Grape Animal, Strawberry Jams, and we got our infused five pack, Banana Crepes. I hope to see you guys out here. Our location's at 12235 Wilshire Boulevard. Come through and we'll be happy to help you. Now back to the table. Word up, check out the Dr. Green Thumb locations in California. All right, now uh, let's get into submissions. All right, big shout to Snacks. He's up here chilling. Salute. All right, first one of the day here. We got Cedric. He's saying, I've been slowly refining my New York strip steak stir fry. This one came out great. Okay. It looks pretty good. Bring it. All right. New York steak stir fry. He's saying, though, he's trying to tighten up the plating game. Sorry to strong tone. It's all right. This is on a white plate. It's on a white plate. It's one of, that's a plastic plate, fool. It's like one of those like. No, that's to not. That's not fancy a plastic. plastic. <laughs> that's regular. Plate. <laughs> I know. What, I know I've what seen. I've seen fancy. I've plastic. seen plastic you know plates that are fancy like that. Like that's that. plastic steak yeah. and rice, like at the Japanese places outside. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. And uh, next up in here, we got our boy Dean Jones, all the way from Australia, and he's showing off a little flat chicken that he made the other day. Flat. Oh, you know here. what they actually call that? What do they call it? Spatchcock. Spatchcock. <laughs> yeah, when you split, you take the spine out so you can make it flat and cook evenly. That's Spatchcock. a stupid ass name for you. I don't, I don't like that Lizzo chicken. <laughs> the cock was spatched. Yeah. Spatchcock. <laughs> He's saying my son wanted a side salad and some veggies. All right. Now that looks like one of those those plates you talk about. <laughs> okay <laughs> But it ain't it's, But it looks it like it Right Yeah <laughs> Those hotel plates Where you stay at the cheap hotels Jesus <laughs> Easy <laughs> I, I've the, been there bro Why you talking this Why you talking this plate sense, him, huh? <laughs> Bro I'm just saying I've been, I've been there bro With this Yeah you know, I know I've done her mad drugs Off those plates before We got our boy Tap out up And you're saying Yo these are the best When you're high And need something sweet to eat Yeah those ain't bad Oh, those ain't good. Oh, they're good, but they're just bad for you. Those are like 500 grams yeah. of sugar, bro. They're pretty goddamn and rich. <laughs> yeah, there's sugar. a lot of butter. Yeah. Sugar spike uh, for sure, bro. No, 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 no. It's very rich, man. No, no, no. And whoever brought those cookies? I mean, you could do one, but if you got like, you know, that can't stop shit. Yeah. Yeah, you eat that whole bag, you better be in the gym next day. Addictive personality. I'm to tell you, son. For real. Uh, it's, not Put- even, it's not even like munchies, bro. You just got to have an addictive personality, and you'll just... If something gives you some kind of dopamine, whether it's satisfa- satisfaction of munching on something or like consuming some kind of, I guess, media, it, it, you're, you're going to fiend that shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. No. I get some it. people, that's how they, they develop that addictive, addictiveness. Dopamine. I don't do drugs. And we got Dante up in here showing off an old Cypress Hill flyer from 1987. And oh my he's asking God, Muggs, man, wow. what are your memories on this? Is that a Cypress yeah, Hill flyer? Yeah, no, I, I posted that one time. That's where you got that from the internet because ain't nobody got that but me. I still got the original. <laughs> that was the first party that we did in Bell Gardens at Ross Hall wow. in 1987 when 7A3 came and played. It was the first motherfuckers I knew with a record. And that's when I became the 7A3 wow. DJ that day. Be Real pulled up, came late, he didn't rap. Julio DJ for a minute. Melo is there. That's when um, he was. Um, M-Walk. 
M Walk was there, but yeah. oh, Mello wasn't even Mello Man yeah, it, it was Ace, Ace Cool. cool. Yeah, and look, yep. DVX. That's Send Stiff was Send, Send Dog. He wasn't Send Dog yet, and T Tough was T Bone. T Funk of uh, Funk Dude. Yeah, he was T Tough, and that was um, my boys. Omega had the sound system. They was um, an expose and unique sounds. They was the dudes like the GQ boys out of Bell Gardens that had all this turntables. That was at Ross Hall, and um, you know, me and B had clicked in. I met B in '86. And then right before I went to New York, I remember, and then that was like a year later, and he was deep in the hood right at that time. I remember he pulled up a little B rat and then one other little one of the homies from over there. And um he came. You remember that party? Yeah. Yeah. You, you see Cypress Hill Posse. Yeah, we yeah. Were, that was it. We were still, you know, working it out, we were baby. Still working it out, man. And MC Fonz, who's that? Julio G was Mello, right there. Melo didn't have his deal yet. That was before, because when I got with seven A three and um we was and I, they was like after that night they was like we got three shows coming up with Ice T you want to be our DJ and I was like yeah yeah let's go and then we did the shows and then it was like then we went into the studio like a month later at Delicious Vinyl over on Santa Monica and we was recording the song for Colors a Mad Mad World and that's when I told the homies I was like yo let's go to Hollywood come with me to the studio and let's go to Hollywood let's figure this music shit out and Mellow roll with me and we got up there and you know I was like he raps and they looked at me like whatever. They was working on Tone Loke and Young MC at the time. And um, then I was like, no, he raps in Spanish. And then I seen fucking dollar signs in their eyes. But Melo didn't rap in Spanish yet. Only Send Dog did. Send Dog had Dina. Remember the couple yeah, rhymes? Yeah, right. We went back to the crib. Melo wrote a Spanish rhyme that weekend with his mom. Came to my crib. Did the demo on on my big radio that we did real estate on. And he, right. he rapped over the Shamalama, who was on Sleeping Bag Records instrumental. Did the demo and brought it back to them and got his deal at Delicious Vinyl. Yeah. Just like that. Just like that. Awesome. The boom box. Hmm. We got the inner realms up in here. The homie did these soul assassin sketches. Oh, shit. Those are tight. Excellent. That's nice lettering right yeah, there, nice man. Yeah, nice line work, man. Very clean. That does look tough. This is well not done. AI. I was going to say, is this Major Mike and his fucking AI? <laughs> going, going AI crazy. <laughs> Muggs, did you see Is Major Mike like 6'3"? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, hitting 400 probably. probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's a big, I know he takes double or triple XL, so he's a big boy. Um, did you see the, the graffiti buildings up here in L.A.? Oh, the, the ones that are all over the internet yeah, right now? Yeah, you know you can see it right Oh, can you? Front, right here. Oh, they're going nuts, house. right? Oh, yeah. man. They're going crazy. Bro. <laughs> yeah, man, that shit is nuts. Yeah. They, uh, artists from everywhere, everywhere are trying to come get a little piece of it. One of them is Blaze, too, but with a Z. Yeah. With B-L-A-Z-E. Oh, my God. Close enough. All right. The guy who goes they, by they, They're under construction, right? Under, yeah. They, 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 well, they, like two years abandoned or something, They stopped the construction because the, you know, they ran out of money. Oh, the dope money went dry, huh? Yeah. And they stopped that in 2019, so it's yep. been abandoned since then. Oh wow, almost that's five years. Almost. Yeah, there was politics behind that. Why oh, the money ran out? Always is, for sure. All right, and we got Justin saying, "Yo, guys, hit that joint and check out these famous mug shots." Ah, wow. Tim Allen's. <laughs> Prince, what did he do? Half a half a kilo. Yeah, what did Prince do? Oh, he do. I don't know. <laughs> What did look Prince at Keanu? Do? I didn't know he got pop. Yeah. Hey man, look at cool. hey, my in the bottom right. Corner, what am I man. doing here, <laughs> man? <laughs> look at even Frank Sinatra though. Yeah, that's famous as hell. Bill Gates, come look at Tiger Woods, this man. He looks blitzed. Yeah, he's totally smashed. Tiger blood. Look at oh, Tiger yeah. blood. Uh, the juice. Yep. <laughs> the juice. Tiger looks faded. You Word. Yeah. <laughs> Is that a real Stone Cold one? Yeah. Yeah, these are all real. <laughs> look at just looks like he look a little yeah, Look at Dennis Hopper. He is wow. just totally ran up. Yo. Same with Vince Vaughn. Vince Vaughn. Oh, word. Oh, yeah. Why is Deion Sanders so happy to be there? <laughs> because they knew who he was and they were giving him the treatment, oh, son. Yeah. That's the only, reason, it's the only reason you smile in the he goddamn smiled. booking <laughs> shot, son. I would say most of these people, police officers, ask for their autographs. Sure. Yep. As they're arrested. You ain't wrong. We got Sarah up in here saying, yo, big shout out to DJ Muggs. Um, love you, Muggs. I just got to shoot through and say hello. What's happening, Sarah? What's happening? And next up in here, we got STL. He's saying, yo, rest in peace to Toby Keith. He's he peace, Toby Keith. He's with Willie. Shocking, y'all. Smoke. Weed with Willie. All right. 
Yeah, he has that song, I Will Never Smoke Weed with Willie Again. Yeah, he probably got faded out because when Willie was smoking weed, he had some good top-notch shit. We got Xanad saying, yo, saw Muggs was in the building today. Shout to all the soul assassins. Boom. You shout out to you, homie. Good looking. And next up in here, we got Red Boy He's saying, I bet aliens ride past Earth and lock their doors. <laughs> they don't ride past. They live in here, man. Hello. Probably dig stuff up. They down the street. They down the street. <laughs> Bring it. We got Slappy saying, yo, check out this plant I grew in my basement a while back. The strain was called Time Wreck. That's nice. That's nice good. green weed. Good looks green pretty weed. pretty good. It, it looks like some kind of train wreck, though, the bud structure. Yeah, it actually yeah. does, kind of. So you should it's probably cross the train wreck. Yeah, up, there you go. What was the cross? What would they call it? I don't know, I, but it does have a sativa leaf. Time it's, Wreck. Time Wreck. Definitely a train wreck. Yeah. It's got the word wreck in it. Yes, yep. sir. Yeah. Meaning it's yeah. a haze. It's yes. Have that pissy smell. That part. I'll pissy. I'll smoke, smoke that shit. You are so pissy. You are so pissy. We got tap out saying smoking some granddaddy perp, Keith Rosin Ooh, Roll. Wow. He's giving us the same oh, team. Wow, look at that. Looking purdy, bro. It looks purdy. It did. Definitely it's nice. A, nice presentation. That's art. It is. Nice presentation. You guys notice much effects with the uh, like the keef and the uh, wax on the outside of the joint? Uh, it's just a little bit messy. Messy, and if to it tell drips. You the truth, I don't think it. You don't really taste does. anything. And not just that; it's on the outside. I don't even think that smoke's making yeah. it in through. I think it's just burning off. So I mean, it, yeah. it looks. It looks good, I, exactly. But I don't think it really helps the potency. If you wanted to put it inside, inside. the weed, all that is Correct. potent. You're gonna get high as right. hell. But are you gonna taste any of that? Or probably it's gonna be not. a taste clash. Right? And well, a lot of those keefs are old, and they don't taste good. Yep. Just like they think it's pale. it actually makes. If it you do it yourself freshly, it's probably Correct. really good with good keef. But if you but, buy it right. No. It's usually that brown, green keef, and it tastes like plant, so I don't want it. Listen, people, if you want to make keef, right, out of your weed, just go get yourself a brand new coffee grinder. Don't don't use the one you might have already that you ground coffee in it. Go get yourself a new coffee grinder and just keep tapping your weed, you know what I mean? When, anytime you roll, want to roll some weed for that time, sacrifice it. Instead of using a grinder, boom, couple taps, and as you go... Probably, you know, you save up for a month's time of, of that, right? And then you scrape the lid, and that's your keef right there. And sometimes it's, you know, right there around the edges. So, uh, yeah, if you want to make your fresh keef and do something like that, do it with your own weed. Don't, don't buy it. Because chances are you ain't going to taste it like that. All right, next. We got Reiki Rabbit saying, uh, so excited to share these with y'all. Um, I started painting again after attending a puff and sip paint event in Arizona. I'm very excited to see where this rabbit hole takes me. Is it puff and sip? Yeah, those puff are dope events. Sip. They're like, they're, I've been to like one or two, two of them, and they're like usually, they usually give you some mellow like wine or like cocktails. And yeah. Just, okay. I've been to the wine version of it. You know what I mean? I wanted to do one of those with, with David Arquette here. Went before when it was, you know, open. Offense. Yeah. Nice. We might still do it, but in another building. All right, next. We got Purple Haze saying, been recovering from a minor surgery, and I'm using hash rosin pills. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just made a fresh batch. There you go. No. What do you put mix it with butter or something? No. If it's actually just really good light color, that's what it'll come out like. It's just the, yeah, it looks good. Nice. Excellent. Good. Things look filled. Good for yeah. you. I'll fuck it. you up. Enjoy. Yes, they will. <laughs> got one in my pocket right now. Mm. And we got Chev all the way from London. He's showing off his stash box. That's a nice stash box, man. I like your style, dude. Nice. What do you think about that London weed? Looking good? Hey, not bad for London. Not bad for not London, yeah. London. Is it illegal over there? I don't uh, know they have so. medical, I know. Yeah, they got Oh, one. they do? Yep. Oh. Medicinal. Yeah, I believe their medical program's pretty strict over there. Yeah. One day it'll be um, it'll recreational. We got Skywalker. He's growing some LSD, and he's saying it's coming along nicely. Nice. Yeah, they look good. Yep, chunky. Like the sour diesel. It's the chunk. 
Was that a big strain like in the late 2000s? In the LSD? Lemon sour diesel? Um, no, nah, I didn't hear much about it. It was around. It wasn't a, a, a big one, though, like that. It just certain people like the Terp. Yeah, that's what it was more about. It's a Terp profile. Mm -hmm. Had people. We got Eric Bobo up in here. You want to talk about this? Your little bike ride, man? Oh, boy. Oh, man. Look at him. Wait, wait. That's uh, a badass bike. Oh, oh, shit. Hey. With the limited edition Cortoon bike. Cortoon. Oh, shit. Yeah, 144 spokes. Shout yeah. Out Cartoon, you know, man. Shout out to Cartoon. What happened man. with your camera right there? Fell down. <laughs> no, no, that wasn't mine. That wasn't my camera work. As you see, I have both hands. Hey, both be real. When are you going to ride your bike? Well, I got one more week before I could do anything. So, you know. You have two bikes. Yeah, I got four bikes. Too. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm over here every time. I'm like, just like, man, this is a badass bike. You should really. Well, I'm, you know. He's I'm going to get, get on it. He's going to get there. I just got one more week. I man. took it out for a spin the other day. Well, you did. Down, I'll kill you. <laughs> 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 it was Saturday. Don't I you just, ever. <laughs> I saw oh, it, dude. Man. It's God all right. Damn. Somebody's got to put some miles on it. I was going to ask you, Bobo, any close calls, any accidents so far? Nope. Nope. Okay. He wears a helmet, dude. Bobo can ride a bike. He can't ride a motorized bike. Look, I'm for, good with that. I'm he, good with all of that. First of all, you know he just put the hat on for the video. <laughs> like, just let you know, because Bobo plays it safe, bro. I've seen, I seen the videos of other people tagging right. Rocking helmets. The helmet. Yeah, yeah on the On the more extreme rides, you yeah, have the helmet, but that's like the slow booze cruise. Yeah. So you're just like chilling, you know, kids right there. Everybody's yeah. just chilling. But all I right. definitely have a helmet. Can't take no chances. Can't take no chances. We got tap out saying, I ain't never thought of this. Smoking out the inhaler. And you shouldn't. Right. That's oh, that's thing. plastic. <laughs> Word. Hey, well, that, all that smoking on foil will give you Alzheimer's. Just buy a bowl. Yeah, no, like man. $3. Just go <laughs> get some glass, baby. You can get a bowl for like five bucks, bro. It's go a, get some it's zigzags a, it's for a, two bucks. It's a female. <laughs> you don't want to. Oh, yeah. Those are some nails. Yeah. But them nails just have a guy buy you, you know. Yeah, just have your man buy you a proper glass <laughs> pipe. It's not cracked. You know what I'm saying? It's Word. weed. Treat it's it okay. right. Hey, don't use your inhaler. And we got Chris showing off some slap and tickle by Exotic Genetics. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> exotic yeah. Genetics. They got some fire strains. That looks yeah. fire. That's man. very close. Shout out to Exotic Mike. It's very close. Looks good. Very pretty. Bring it. Who's got the bomb of shit out right now? That's always going to be subjective to flavor. You know what right, I'm saying? Right. Like, because he could be a straight OG guy, and then you could be a guy who likes candy. So it's literally, that's always going to be a preference. Yeah, it's hard to say it right is. now. It is. Um, that's a tough one. It, and then, you know, but you know what? Let consistency, me tell you. too. I'll tell you this. The most popular strain right now, by far, lemon cherry gelato. That's yeah. Hands down. Yeah, that's, pretty much. Everybody's growing it. Everybody likes that's it. That's mostly due to marketing, though. Yeah, but I'm yeah. just telling. No, but it's also a good strain. It smokes well. No, it's it's smoke. a great yeah. strain, but I'm it saying is. it's become the most popular pick because of, like, how yeah. great other a lot of people have uh, done by marketing that specific strain and putting it in so many different uh, bags. And, and changing the names. And, and changing runs. Changing the names, yeah. yeah. Well, and runs. Yeah. But, and runs. Which Lemon which Cherry is, Gelato was yeah. a pheno of runs. It's, yeah. So it's still the same thing. Well, I'm basically. saying, you know, it's marketing. Yep. But now the, the same be, shit. because yeah. of, of the uh, the abundance of all that kind of strains or those kind of strains, it's like it, the rare or quote-unquote exotic strains have become those strains that are not produced anymore. Like the OG... Hard to come across. Now that's considered. Now you'd be like, oh, that's kind of exotic. That's because exotic being rare. For me, what I was liking a few months back was RS11. Oh, that's still a huge one. Yeah, that yeah. shit. RS11 is another huge. What one. is it? Got trends that goes through cycles. Yeah, trends, R yeah. Rainbow yeah. Sherbet 11. It got big about yeah. like maybe three years ago. I think it started. Maybe four years ago, it came out, and then in the last year or two, it just exploded. I missed the biscotti. Yeah, yeah you know the ex the exotics always go on. A I'm going to biscotti right now. Regular biscotti, it's fire. But some of them have like you know they're like three or four different names. Yeah. You know, yeah, the original. So yep. it's like. You know, There's the original the, name, and then the the, uh, the the other names that come up, so that you're not right. so that yeah. you're not competing with the original yeah. over uh, there. Well, you are, but you're not because right. you're making people think it's a different strain. Right. It, and it's it's a horrible part of the game, you know. But it exists for sure. All right. All right. The last submission today, we got a beat submission, um, and it's called a low end wizards. Listen to it. Bring it. it.
feel it's like, like it's on, on on that lo-fi flavor. Yeah, it is. Right? I like the little graphics they use for that. Vaporwave is... Just sit back and bake to this. Or you could vape to this. He was focused on me like I was going to drop a freestyle on you right now. <laughs> <laughs> Not right now. <laughs> but this is dope. It's a laid back, smoky track, Mike. It is also lo fi ish. Yeah. yeah. If it was on a playlist, I wouldn't forward it. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'd let it run. That's funky, man. Yeah. That's 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 something you could actually write to, Mike. Salute, dope. Who sent that in? That was a uh, low end wizard, oh, and it was end. called a uh, my click rips. Oh well, it's all right in the name. It's it you know low end wizard lo fi. Uh, there you go. Dope dope track. Word up. Fuck up real TV. Fucking a green though. You gotta check it out. I don't do the fucking weed myself. I like the fucking cocaine, especially sniffing off the strippers' ashes. Hit the motherfucker big. Don't need some problem. Oh, big dude, big boogie. Oh, I heard the Dr. Green them show, the highest show in the world. Hey, yo, check this out. This is the legendary Spool B, and I'm at the Dr. Green them show. Let's go. Be Real TV, baby. Shout out to Be Real, the Dr. Green Thumb show. Everybody, shit is incredible. I loved it. Can't wait to come back, man. Westside, Young Casey, Reggie's Pizza Carriage Internationally in the building. Word up, we're about to open up the doors to the Insane Asylum. That means, y'all, you got a comment, question, shout out, suggestion. Let's go. Welcome to the Insane Asylum. All right, let's do this. First one of the day, we got Utah Hawk. He's asking Muggs, how did you like the Sundance Film Festival? It looked like you had some fun in the snow. Yeah, man, uh, I had a great time um, up there. Rented a house. We did some snowmobiling. I went out there. There was these people have forty five thousand acres. I went on a three Damn. hour snowmobile mm -hmm. adventure. Damn. There was no, you know, usually they put the blocks on the speed limit on these things. They took you in uh, deep, like an hour into the mountains, and um, it was one of the best snowmobile experiences I had. Sundance is good. You know that main strip gets a little too crazy. You can't even get a seat at the bar. So. You know, I spent a little time in there, showed the film, DJ the party with DJ Juggy out there, then then went into town when um, you know, downtown's only forty minutes away when I really needed to eat and stuff. But if you never had a chance to get up there, it's a it's a good week, man. It's a good time up there. Get up there. When you were on the the snowmobile, you were filming. Was that an elk? What were you? Yeah, there was elk. There was elk. There was right? elks out there. Yeah, it was beautiful. Yeah, these bro. people got forty five thousand acres, but yeah. you know they um they in it's a working ranch, right? So they grade all the roads and everything right. in the summer, and then in the winter you like on trails, and then they let you into this giant field, and it's like go. Yeah, it's dope. Just go, don't kill yourself. Yeah, whenever you go and like rent them, they put the limit. They, they put you, you they put you in a line. In a line. They say you can't you there, go out. There's yep. a limit, and you just kind of like, yeah. eh, you yeah. know. And I was like, wow, this shit was amazing, yeah. man. I, I just wanted to stay out there. Dope. We was on cliffs. I was looking down. It was like thousand feet, and I was like, oh shit. Couldn't have Bobo wiping, on the, one of them. wiping the snow off my eyes. Like I hope I don't fall <laughs> off. <laughs> Yo. And we got Jeffro. Salute to Master Mugs. Can you talk a little bit more on the Mooch album? Um, the album's called Rockstar, um, which is, it's, it has like a three-layer meaning. Number one, he's from Rochester, New York, right? Um, number two, you know, he's selling rocks in the streets, but then being a rock star, making music. So it's those three things. Um, Twelve songs on the album, three bonus tracks that'll probably appear in the European edition through RRC Records out of Italy. And um, it drops March 29th. We're going to drop four songs before March 29th with four videos, you know. So just a slow, slow build up, man. And, you know, I brought Mooch in and, you know, he actually let me produce them and change some change some things up that he usually does. So you're going to hear different um, song structures, a little different voice with Mooch and some, some, some vocal textures that you never heard before. And I just love Mooch as a human being, man. So... More than just talent, man, you got to be a cool motherfucker. It's, if I'm going to sit in a room with you for, you know, 30 days and work on a project, you know, away from my family and stuff, that's one of the main things. So um, love Mooch, love Riggs, love the cloth, the whole crew up there from Rochester, you know what I mean? So I'm looking forward to this record drop, and I think y'all going to love it. 
And we got Ask a Bum. Mugs, I feel like you and Danny Boy could collab on an Outsiders-themed album. Also, have you ever worked with rave giants like Joey Beltram? I don't know who that is. He's a rave giant. No, sir. <laughs> giant of raves. He's a survey said. <laughs> <laughs> we got J Max C saying happy Wednesday, y'all, and a big shout out to the legendary DJ Muggs, the Black Goat. Also, shout out to We Don't Smoke the Same. Same team all day. Yeah, salute to you guys. Uh, and sorry about this morning. The internet was uh, being pretty. What happened? You couldn't go on? Yeah, we couldn't uh, live stream. Uh, they didn't get fixed till the <coughs> got delivered. But we pre recorded for when I'll be, I'll be in Japan later this month. So we got one of those episodes down. My favorite place in the world right now is Me Japan. Me too. Yeah. Man, I wish I could go four times a year. I just went about three months ago, my first time in 10 years. And I was like, God, man, why aren't I coming out here? Dude, I, it's like four times a year. It's only 10 hours away. I went last year, and then I was like, I am I don't care if I vacation here every year. It's amazing. Back, they have yeah. like three, four times squares over there. It um, Our money's yes. finally good. Yes. Yeah. Our yeah. money's finally great. Bro, and what's, 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 it was opposite. It was opposite. And what's crazy is that they, they didn't have a military for 50 years, so all that money went into their infrastructure. The most respectable, kindest, loving people, Clean. man. Absolutely. Clean. And you can eat. Five star, five star meals at at Seven Eleven, which is Hell a trip. Yeah. The that is the is trip. Yeah. Not, they won't even sell our poisonous food. You know how much stuff yeah. they banned. Yeah, like they won't even let it import into that country. And what are the like cards? Now. The suke cards, the little cards. Oh, I got one of the, with the yeah, little penguin. I, I got one on my phone. It's <laughs> like, and I tried using my credit card. Using your credit cards, like you trying to get dial up on the internet. Yeah. Like they just, <laughs> you just load up your suke card. Your suke, it's 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 amazing. I got it in my wallet. I can't wait to go back. I still got the same yen I left with. I'm telling you, that place yeah, is that, great. I'm thinking about buying a house out there. Yeah, it's a great place, man. Everybody's so cool, man, and there's so much to absorb there and so much to do and experience. The the thing we always talk about is, did you? I, I, you probably haven't done this, but I know you've seen this when they do the Mario Kart. Oh, I went right by there. They yeah. banned it. Oh, they finally no, I seen banned it when it. I was there. Yeah, no, no, but the, I guess after like a few years, because I was in the last year, I tried to find it, banned it, dude. Because <laughs> they had um. You know where all the shopping is, and then they got the one street where all the youth, the youthful kids shop. It's one of the most busiest streets, and you go down there. It's where all the kids' clothes are, and and I seen the Mario cars was at the end, and then they had um man, it's just that place is great, bro. Yeah, it's lit. It's pretty. Dope. I just took trains all day and went everywhere because my boy was out there doing a bunch of Web three stuff, and he was a professor out there, and um I went and I did a show, and I was like, yo, Japan is the shit. I'm gonna be food blogging while I'm out there. Yes, you are. Do it, amazing. So I'm a great be, food out there, yeah, man. Doing hella high hungries. Then you go down to Kyoto, which is a little bit south of Tokyo, and it's it's like straight traditional old oh, old yeah, world yeah. Japan, you oh, know, yeah. temples, all temples and old school houses and everything. So they, they got the cherry blossom trees down there too. Yeah, man, season just started. When, yeah, when it's in season, it's amazing. Man. They got like a Times Square with a Godzilla, like behind the skyscrapers, and he's, <laughs> you see the Godzilla head up there, and he shoots out fire every now and then. Yeah. Like, hey, I I think they were the first ones using the the what do you call it. Um, as as advertisement the 4D that was oh yeah, yeah. That, yeah that was crazy they're crazy that yeah, was man. crazy I've they're never hit. seen it live I've only seen it on the they internet. look real as fuck yeah. and I'm like I've yo. seen like three or four of them <laughs> and then they got new ones now but I'm that like, shit is yeah. wild they look like they come over the street yep it's crazy Just, yeah. well I can't say yep but from Instagram like I'm looking I'm like nah it, it pops out like that real? it pops out like Instagram yeah it usually, pops out usually yeah. you lose something on the phone you know but you don't lose that wow. when crazy. I was out there with profits we seen it it was crazy I was like oh my god that shit you kind of get like man when is this New York come has come it now yeah now yeah. they have it New York oh, has it yeah, now yeah there's like one or two I just haven't seen yeah yet. there's one or two uh, they're, they're gonna be all over in most so sick you know most big cities are gonna have that and that's going to be a trip. If you're on mushrooms walking down the street and that happens, you're going to be like, oh, shit. Where are we? <laughs> I have a seat. Oh, my God. All right. Next. We got extra two in the super chat asking DJ Muggs, top five hip-hop producers. Oh, man, I got too many, man. There's too many great ones. I got 30, 40 of them, so I couldn't even name that. It would be, be a disservice to all the great producers that are out now and that have been here from the past. He's also asking top five rock bands. And there's another one, like, man, Led Zeppelin and Pink Floyd and Rage Against the Machine and uh, Black Sabbath and The Who, The Doors, Jimi Hendrix. Yeah, there's so many. <laughs> we, we, got, we got very very sophisticated palettes over here when it comes to music, when it comes to food, when it comes to producer, when it comes to talent. So just having a favorite things, I don't think we're that simple, anybody in this room over here, you know what I mean? So 
we we we've we traveled a lot, seen a lot, done a lot, and I think you know like we've I always said, we've always listened to different types of music. Yeah, even very on the sophisticated road, you know, on the with, bus. with with our yep. tastes. Yeah. yeah, it just depends the mood, what mood you're in at the time. Like not. like this week might be my favorite shit. When next week might right. I might that might not be even my top five next week. Yeah. So many favorites, man. We got Breggy B saying, shout to Muggs, top tier OG. I listen to Soul Assassin's Radio Shade 45. This man is a legend. Man, I appreciate that, man. Shout out to the whole Sirius Satellite team, all the people at Soul Assassin Radio that hold it down and make this happen for the last 12, 13 years. We got OG Tone asking, uh, not trying to be that guy, but I got to ask DJ Muggs, do you remember my uncle? He used to rap back in the day. He went by Pookie. Um, or do you know him by his government name, Daryl Strader? No, sir. <laughs> oh, that hurts. <laughs> we got J Max C up in here asking, "Where's one of your favorite countries to visit, or any you have yet to visit, and that you would like to check out?" He's saying mugs all day, every day. Japan, man. We were just talking about Japan, man. Um, next was going to be. I, I haven't been to Bali yet. I want to visit. I want to visit a lot of the Asian countries. I was going to start going, you know, before COVID, like Vietnam, Cambodia. Bali, but, but COVID happened, so that's where I'm going. That th those, that's where my next adventures are going to be. And you, could, what's dope about it is I did that little loop. I did the uh, Thailand, Laos, Myanmar, Killer, yeah, huh? all of it. It's right there. The, the for ones with the Golden Triangle, but you take the Mekong River, like you do a tour and just go straight up the Mekong all the way through it. It is dope. Because when I seen people on the boats in the yeah, rivers, I was, and the, that's what the I wanted to do. The floating market, looks bro, dope. it's so crazy. Wow. It's beautiful. It's a must-do. Yeah. I'm all and about adventures. That's dope. You can hit all those countries in a week. You can go two days there, right there. Oh, that's really crazy. And that's oh. enough time, too, I've noticed, yeah. man, because I, I went to Italy for a month one time, and I was like, let's go stay in Rome for a month. My yeah. cousin was like, nah, yeah, too let's long. go here for two, three days in each city, and you realize that's plenty. Yes, yeah. right. It is. Yeah, Phuket, uh, go oh, to Phuket, uh, Thailand. So if you could stay at the Amani, Amanipur, or Amanipur, that I went, that's yeah. where I went in Phuket, bro. The properties and like the beaches, some of the nicest in the world. Beautiful. That beach is insane. Beautiful. We got Hybrid Cypher saying salute to mugs. Can't wait for the UK shows up in this. Yeah, we in, um, that's right. We doing a, um, DJ tour and, um, March coming this March, and I'll be in I'll be in London. I forgot the dates, but check out um check us out online, and it'll show you where all the dates are. It's a light tour. I don't want to work every day, so I'm taking two three days in each city just to kick it, go shopping, put my feet up, drink a coffee. You know what I mean? And, um, Chill. And, and enjoy life, make music, renting studios out in every city, and just go out there and just basically hit the gym and do what I do here, just over there, and with with a show every few days. Braggy B is asking, Ayo hey, Mugs, what's the next move? Uh, Friday, um, Death Valley is going to be released worldwide on soulassassins.com. 12, 12 p.m. on West Coast time, man. So it's free. So make sure to go peep that. We got Medicine asking, DJ Mugs, any future projects with Sick Jack? And I don't know, you know, but um, I'll... The, the future is open to the field of infinite possibilities, man. I don't, I don't say no to anything. I'm open to whatever is going to happen when it's supposed to happen. We got Christian. He's asking, yo, Muggs, how did you and CeeLo Green link up for your latest project? We've been friends since, I mean, when I first met them, we was doing a show at a college. Cypress was doing a show at a college in the South um, back in the early 90s, and I met them, and Stayed friends with them. Um, I would go to Atlanta for a week and rent a studio and work with them. And they was on the first Soul Assassin record in 97. They was on the second Soul Assassin record in 2001. And um, we just linked up again and, um, you know, did this song. And we got about five more songs in the in the pocket ready to um, do five or six more and then put a project out in the near future. We got Braggy B up in here again saying Muggs is dead. All love. Yeah, you know, it's just, um, it's just, um, you know, I think we all shed a skin and, you know, shed the past and step into our future self. You know what I mean? So that's just the term that I use to step into my future self and leave, leave and, and kill myself and step into the future. Reinvention. Every day. Every day I wake up as a new person. You die every night when you go to sleep and you wake up every day reborn. We got Jeffro saying, sorry, E-Zone. I'm going to buy all those figures on soulassassins.com. <laughs> Fool, I'm pretty sure he made more than like a couple, dog. 
There's literally only five of each one, and then oh, oh, there you go. Go. and then there's three, there's three super packs. What has oh what has all of them God. in the super packs? Well, then I'm pretty sure the super packs are more expensive, so I'll just get that then. The thing we did is um the thing we do, man, is we, 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 I decided not to do in quantity. We're more quality. We're more like a boutique label. We don't make a lot of anything, man. We keep it very limited. You know, keep the numbers low and um. That way in the aftermarket, if you go look at our numbers on Discogs, what the records are worth on the aftermarket, the de- all of our products are definitely an investment because you'll be able to flip it two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times in the next few years. That's Hell yeah, dude. I've seen two year, two Soul Assassin records like in Japan, certain stores, and I'm just like, they were going for I'm like, damn, man, you guys, you well, guys, you know what I'm saying? They appreciate the culture, 100%, bro. 100%, but it's like, you know, I just, the, the consumer has changed from when we were kids with the sneaker culture and, and the supreme culture where kids are waiting in line and they want that exclusive limited shit. So I make sure, you know, I, I, I do my products like that. Everything's limited. Everything's number. Everything's authenticated. And because the headies, that's what they want. Yeah. They I don't. Want one I, of ten. I, I never repress yeah. anything. You know what I mean? So what you get, then you see that your stuff is going to hold value, and you're going to. It becomes an investment, not just a, a record. You know. Right, man. And we got a. Uh, let's see. We got Hybrid Cipher asking, "Was L.A. the Dark Man's first appearance on Soul Assassins One?" L.A. La the Dark Man's his name, so that's oh, probably La the, Dark La the Dark Man's first. Oh, that that's that's a bolt that's special a bold right move. there. Yeah. L.A. Sock him. <laughs> I was I was, I was going back and forth wah, wah, between wah. it because I went on Apple Music and then they put L.A. capitalized, but I went on another website. It wasn't. Yeah, well, that's when I first met him. I met him through my brother Tyree, who now is the Wu Tang Clan's manager, and um, we did some work on La's first record, and he did this did this for the first Soul Assassin record. Because what I like to do is take you know like some of the biggest artists of the time and some of the, the youngsters who, who ain't even known yet. It was like the future dudes coming up. So at that time, he was one of the youngsters that nobody knew about. We got a baby up in here saying, we need another Mugs Planet Asia album. Time will tell, baby. Time will tell. I'm a big Planet Asia fan. I love him. I think he's a super talented brother and a, and a, and a, and a, and a good man, you know. So if, if it's supposed to happen, it will happen. This, you know what? These days, man, there's just not enough time to do what we want to do. Yeah. I got the, the, as many ideas as I have. It's probably going to take me five or ten lifetimes to fucking do them all. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens, man. It's supposed to happen. We'll make it happen. Yeah, he was just up here last mm-hmm. week. Oh, hell yeah. We got a Kobe on. He's saying, uh, yo, B, would you work with Firmin Quattro from Control Machete? Um, I believe there we did. have, yeah. Yeah. Um, in the past, but yeah, of course, you know, if there was something that made sense in today's structure, hell yeah, that's my boy. Ooh, that me. We got sick. He's asking Mugs, will you work with any UK artist? Absolutely. Um, I have in the past and I will in the future when, you know, when, when it presents itself. We got Chris up in here saying much love to the Be Real TV crew and the Black Goat. Muggs is the best producer in the game. Thanks for signing my notes and Tones vinyl in Chicago. Can we get a Soul Assassin's tour? That will be legendary. Yeah, we're about to go on a Soul Assassin's tour in Europe. We're about to take it to Europe and, um, and then um, Latin America after that. I haven't, I haven't went and did no DJ tours in like four or five years, but I think this year I'm going to do a few. We got Joe Smo saying, my top three producers of all times is Muggs, Dr. Dre, and Rico Wade of the Dungeon family. Oh, hell yeah. Thank you, brother. Appreciate that. It's a good list. We got Michael Taylor. Love and respect to you, Muggs. I asked B this question a few years ago. What was the greatest fear challenge you had to face, and how did you overcome it? Just, you know, um, probably the relationship with myself. I think the hardest relationship you'll ever have in your life is with yourself, you know what I mean? And conquering, and conquering yourself. And um, good luck with that. We got Karina saying, watch Eric's sermon episode this morning after work. Woke up to mugs on. What a treat. Y'all rock. I'll catch, I'll catch the end in the morning. Thank you, fam. Salute. Bom, bom. And we got Baby again saying, Mug's cinematic approach to sounds is next level. Thank you very much. We got T Flow saying, much love to the Soul Assassins fam. Death Valley is fire. Can we get a Cypress? Uh, summer anthem produced by Mugs with the squad. Hell yeah, you already know. Bring it, bring it. And we got Braggy B again saying, "I'm putting up Mugs against Riza Dre Premier. Mugs wins." Oh yeah, we ain't battling, man. Everybody's there doing their thing. Everybody's stretching this culture. That's a Mount you know, Rushmore. Everybody, of cha- everybody's right changed the game right there and, and spread this thing we all love and made it possible for the future to do it. So, 
I'm just, and I'm big fans of all them dudes. They all inspired. I'll tell you what, right there, the names he mentioned is, you know, Golden Era Mount Rushmore. Yeah, agreed. Of, produ- of agreed. producers. Right. Agreed. You know, everybody that made significant contributions and were mad successful and, like, you know, had their own sound. That was the thing, having your own sound at that time. You had to. You had to have your own look, your own sound, your own style, your own slang, your own way to dress. And now everything sounds the same. It looks the same. Yeah, it's crazy. Same words. Yeah. Cookie cutter. Yeah. It's crazy. You wouldn't, nobody, I know a lot of fools wouldn't even get deals back in the 90s. Oh, hell no. Especially the ones not rapping on beat at all. And it, I mean, I've seen Eric Sermon <laughs> said the exact same thing. Like you had DOS FX, Red Man, and this. And everybody was just different. Everybody yeah. had their own shit. Yeah. It was big back then. You had to have your own shit. You had and to have Cypress had their sound. Like you, you had to have a can. Second, the beat hit. You knew that was Cypress. Second thing so you heard us. Before I even yeah. heard the voice kick in. He made up his own knew. slang. He had his own mm-hmm. slang, too. Yeah. You know, it was like just shit was. Everyone was original. Everyone had their thing. And you had, had to be. You had wasn't to. accepted if you was. You was a biter. You yeah. were whack. You wouldn't even, they wouldn't even shake your hand. Yeah. You original and unique. Hmm? Everybody had their different layers. All right. We got Fifth Prophet asking Muggs, what's your favorite Dilla track? Oh, man, there's just so many. Come on, man. That's just, I couldn't even answer that. That, 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 that would be a dishonor to, dishonor to, to, to the legend Jay Diller right there. His whole catalog, his whole career, and all the, all the inspiration, all these producers and styles that he inspired alone, man. You know what I mean? Think about yeah. what this man has done. Yeah, he don't have no weak tracks, really. And, and his inspiration's still going. Yeah, you know? I mean, he's got a day. It, yes. Still a day, my... That's dope that they got a deal a day for him, man. Luke. We got C10. He's saying, shout to Soul Assassins. We riding, we ain't hiding. That's right. We nope. got Hybrid Cypher saying, Eric Sermon, DJ Muggs, and Psycho Less must be Goat Producer Week. There it is, baby. And we got Anthony White saying, yo, B, I'm coming to L.A. in a couple of weeks and coming to the Dr. Greentham store there for the first time. I can't wait. Boss it. Get yourself some gas. Smoke. Got plenty of it. And we got Funky Doobie saying salute to all the legends at the table. Yo, Muggs, what's the story on Strictly Hip Hop when you said House of Pain ain't down with us? By the way, love your work, Soul Assassins for Life. At that moment, they wasn't. So that's what we was we was feeling that that day, and that's how I felt, and that's what was going on at that moment. You know, we we we, we fixed all that since then. Soul and we got a. We got Utah Hawk up in here saying, Bobo, the music and evil laugh last night set the tones right. You were evil laughing? Man, it was classic last night, uh, B-movie night. Man, uh, Bolton, uh, you should tell him about the, the one that wants to jump your bones. That, uh, <laughs> someone that, 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 there's someone that wants Bolton. Yeah, there's, some, there's, there's someone in the Discord that's yeah, always trying to like baby. flirt it up with L- me. Listen, They're always sending me DMs. Listen, if they jump Bolton's bones, they might break them. I mean, you sleep, look at them right now. Man, be careful, Bolton. Be careful, Bolton. Shit. Don't get your, How old is he? Don't get your bones. <laughs> <laughs> I said the same oh, thing boy. yesterday. I was like, this isn't a chick in here, I bet. Uh, that's good. I was like, so. I'm getting catfish. <laughs> that's good. He's getting catfish. That's right. All right. And we got one time piece. He's saying discipline is more important than motivation overall. What are your thoughts on that? Facts. Yeah. The discipline is everything. Yeah. You know, and the follow through execution. You know how many people I know who they talk about great things, great ideas, what no execution. No follow through. No follow through. No end game. And not just that, the second there's something that's difficult, they give up. You yep. know, like there's there's so much more. And I I know people use the word a lot, but the reason I hate the word manifesting because I think people believe in it wrong. They think like, all you got to do is think about it and it's going to happen. You're out of your fucking Bro, mind. you got to put work. You got to put in like if work. It, people think it's going to happen. Bro, even yeah. magic requires work. Right. Oh, no, you, you, know you, you got to say it and believe it, but you got to also be willing to put the work There you go. It. There's more to it. It's not yes. And just, the discipline is when you're not motivated to get the fuck up early. That's right, right. Go handle your Because you're not you know? always that's motivated. Like, that's like the date. Like, let's say you work out, right? You, it's in your, the culture of you, right? And that day, you don't want to work out. But some, you know, some's telling you, get in that gym. That's you gotta that discipline. got to do it anyway. Yeah. You know what I mean? You may not want to do it, but you know it's necessary. And yeah. then the key is consistency, man. It's like even if you do a little bit every day, it's more than doing eight hours a day for a week. Just never stop. Yeah. It's the key. Yeah. The shit. Doing something is better, doing, better than doing nothing. Yeah. And motivation and discipline 
it's more important to have the discipline because you will lose motivation. Things are going to happen that is going to make you not want to do it. The discipline aspect is what makes you say, I'm going to keep doing it. Every day you get up, you don't give up. You, you fucking keep, hate it. There you yeah. go. Oh, you yeah. hate it. You may not the, love the to The motivation do it. might not be there, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But if you got the discipline, you'll succeed. We got Sir Puffalot saying, Muggs, you're my favorite artist of all time. I'm a producer and MC who's been inspired by you for the last 25 years. Congrats on Death Valley. Keep up the great work. Soul Assassins for life and stay blessed. Thank you, brother. I appreciate the words, man. Salute to you, too. We got As You Should saying, shout to DJ Muggs, the best in the business. And I think this is a question for uh, Blaze and Be Real. Can y'all explain what happened to the cheese trains? Nobody wants them. <laughs> yeah, you know what? It's funny. <laughs> Nobody wanted just like that. The, the, yeah, go away. Yeah, and then all of a sudden it was like, yo, I what happened it. to that cheese? I still yeah. don't want them. You know what? I, I, I actually I, I, I like do. the cheese, man. The original yeah. UK cheese, like that was a strain I actually like because you either loved it or hated it. I don't it mind very it. Weird. You know? I don't mind it, but it's not what I'm looking for or checking for because right. I know there's much better, you know. Yeah. It's just so different. That's why I liked it. It was very, very different. Facts. Yeah, no, it there's too many, like too many nope. better options for me. For you your know? hating on yeah. the cheese, dude. for my palate. For your palate, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I'm not hating on the cheese. It's just I <laughs> don't want. He just don't it. enjoy it. Yeah. We got Funky Doobie again. He's saying mugs make it rough, and he's asking, will there ever be a Soul Assassins reunion tour? Uh, you never know, man. Shit. Possible, I don't, man. I, my, I don't got my crystal ball, you know, it, it's kind of broke, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> you never know, man. A lot of people ask for that. Like wh wh whenever we get down somewhere, someone, oh, there's always one person. Man, are you guys going to come back with Soul Assassin's tour reunion? I guess it comes down to the, the promoters want to make it happen. Yeah. You know, and I'm, everybody's I'm, time. Like, we're we're ready. Yeah. Yeah, someone just posted on idea. I saw a, a poster from that tour, all the tour dates and everything. Classic. 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 It was nuts. Tell you what, we had fun on that. Being, you know, just wilding out every night. Uh, yeah. Crazy. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Next. And we got oh. Design Sore. He's saying, is that an earful t shirt, mugs? That's a white tee. Uh, Stafford's. That was straight from Sears, baby. Stafford's my favorite. Stafford. They got a good cut. Yeah, good cut. And we got a Joe up in here saying, I seen all of Cyprus in the late nineties in Fresno, California. Still one of the show one of the best shows I've ever seen. And he's asking Muggs, will you ever tour with Cypress Hill again? Well, time will tell, baby. And we got Braggy B again saying, Love to the table. Big shout to Callie Blaze, THD crew. One love. Oh man. I keep hearing Brady B. Like I keep thinking Brett's Brady. jumping on there. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't seen him in a minute. <coughs> Salute to Brady B, man. We got Dollar Bill. He's saying Muggs is a cool person. How badass is it that he's able to do any fun shit that he wants? Uh, he's got it figured out. We need to get all our shit together, guys. He's talking to the chat. True that. Life by design, baby. A lot of discipline. We got uh, E-Man. Question for Muggs. How is it working with Tricky? And will there be any more projects like Dust anytime soon? Oh uh, Yeah, it was interesting. I had a good time. Um... But probably um, dust. Oh, shit. I do have a project like that, but I'm just waiting for the right time to put it out. It's been done for about six, seven years, so we'll see what happens, man, If the when, when the planets align. And we got Steph asking, how can I monetize my beats as standalone songs? Man, just start putting your beats up and, and making your own videos and putting your videos up and just do a lot. I know there's an artist I know, he only makes beats and he does remixes <coughs> with acapellas and he just puts them up. He has about 100 albums. They make about $200 a project each and you do the math 100 times 200 every month, you know, and you just build it, man. Give yourself five years. Start seeing something. We it, got, ain't, it ain't gonna happen overnight. We got Joker's Oddball. He's saying, yo, B, I think the 50 years of hip hop was the best thing I ever saw on the electric screen. Mm. I wish... I wish I was here yesterday for the show. I would pay to ask Eric why they weren't on that. Probably scheduling problems. You know what I mean? They they might have been doing something, doing a show or something like that. Not, I mean, not everybody that should have been there, you know, was there. There were a lot of groups that were missing. Yeah. And that's because some of them didn't want to do it, and some of them just weren't available. I mean, we were barely available. I mean, we had been doing shows for a minute. We barely made the cut for that 
We got Hobby G saying, hell yeah, mugs and Worthy killed it. Word up, guys. Shout out Jay Worthy. Yeah, that's my man right there, man. I love, the, I love what he's doing. Love what he's about. Love his get down. His music's dope as fuck. We banged that album out in like, I mean, the, the actual recording time was probably, there's 12 songs. It was probably six, seven days of actual recording time, then another three weeks of me finishing. But um, I had a great time making that record. Looking forward to the next. We already got a couple songs done. And we got Mike saying, shout to DJ Muggs, the most relevant producer of the last 30 years. And I just stay disciplined, man. I stay a student, and um, I just, you know, keep trying to learn and improve at what I'm doing, man, and try to keep inspiring the youth, man, and, and, and keep the sound that I love, just keeping it alive so, you know, it won't disappear. So I, my job now is just to inspire the future. And the last one so far, we got Crypto Zoo saying, Mugs will always be in my top five producers list. Cypress, Beasties, and Wu-Tang started my love for hip-hop back in the 90s. Thank you guys for all of that. Ain't nothing like the 90s, baby. Oh, yeah. Golden era. Gold school. Gold school. Gold school. We ain't old school. We gold school. All day. We want to thank you for your interactions. We want to thank you for your submissions. We want to thank you for being here with us. Uh, the love and vibes and support. Um, it means everything, man. We want to thank my man, the Black Goat, DJ Bucks, legendary. Thank you, fellas. Thank you, fellas, for having me once again. Yeah. Y'all gentlemen, this is a great time. Looking forward to coming back. Word up. You got any shout-outs you want to give? Oh, man, just shout-out to the whole Soul Assassin family worldwide. You know what I mean? All of our supporters, man, since day one, and all of our new supporters, man. And um, thanks for everybody, man. Word up, Bobo. All right. Uh, catch me on the socials on X Twitter at Eric Bobo, IG at Eric underscore Bobo. Also on Discord, Insane Asylum server in Bobo's Corner. Big ups to brother uh, uh, Muggs for coming on through. And everybody here at the table, Treehouse crew, uh, everybody that joined up on B-Movie Night last night, uh, thank you. And uh, for all the people that support the, the, the show, Snacks and I, we say buddy. <laughs> Bolton. All right, B, I'm going to do this Cali Vibes ticket giveaway right now. Boss it. All right, let's do this here. We got the wheel. We're about to spin it. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, looks like we got Christian. Christian Leon. Or Leon. Is it Leon or Leon? <laughs> anyway, uh, send us your information to berealtvcontest at gmail.com and we will send you your tickets. Shout to the Insane Asylum. Thank you guys so much. Shout to Ray Morning Shot Films. Shout to the Dominator. Shout to DJ Muggs. And what's going on, Blaze? Shout out to Muggs, man. Thanks for coming through. Always Thank you, brother. Yeah, you're kicking some knowledge. Um, shout out to Planet Budge. All the straight pieces of trash. You don't pay your vendors. I'm going to come check you soon for my money. Whoa. Whoa. So, yo, I'm I had enough with <laughs> dispensaries <laughs> not paying. Oh, they're garbage. We need our money. And you think it's cool to keep it even posted up? I'm going to use your money to go snowboarding. I'm going to check you on that, my man. I'm getting mm. cash. Trust me. Mm. Shout out to everybody else. Much love to everybody. We follow the 5150s, wifey, family. Ooh, yeah. Salute to uh, Muggs for coming by today. Thank you, brother. Uh, thank you, everybody, who uh, tried to tune in this morning. But we'll be back tomorrow, 7 to 9, with another episode. We don't smoke the same podcast. Steph Tone is coming on, and he's bringing a friend. So make sure you guys tune in. It's going to be a great time. Uh, go to flavorsbyezone.com. I just uploaded a bunch of new eras on there and also a bunch of one of one of pieces. I'm sorry, one of one pieces that uh, for the High and Hungry brand. And uh, yeah, check out the High and Hungry TV Instagram because, you know, this season, this year's season is in production already. You heard it earlier. Takes discipline. Swallow that.